should be another sold out crowd here at Target Field. Game two of the three game weekend set the Twins and the White Sox. Look at the American League Central standings. White Sox after a 5 3 victory last night trail the first place Tigers by six and a half games. The Twins with the loss fall to nine games out of first place. So we welcome you to Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. I'm Robbie Smikowski joined by Tim Laudner, Tom Kelly, and Dick Bramer on the field for the 1991 reunion ceremonies. They'll be with you in just a moment. Tonight, Tim, if the Twins are going to get a victory, you're going to have to do it with the arm of Carl Pavano. And when you look at his past performances, what do you think are his keys to success? Well, when Carl Pavano locates his fastball, he's most effective. He has a four-seamer and he has a two-seamer, which, as you can see right here, is a great out pitch for when he starts it on the inside half and lets it come across the plate. Carl also has a very effective slider when he uses it, and we all know about his changeup. His key tonight is to make sure he keeps his fastball down, but he can't forget about his slider, and I don't know if Carl forgets about his slider or maybe the catcher forgets to call it, but it's a very effective pitch, and it changes the eyes of the hitter, Robbie. He needs to use that tonight. Now there's a chance all of us tonight here at Target Field could witness some history. Jim Tomey, 598 career home runs with two more, becomes just the eighth person ever to hit 600. Robbie is one of four current major leaguers that was playing in 1991 when the Minnesota Twins won the World Series. That type of longevity allows you, along with obviously his power, to hit 598 career home runs. We could possibly see career home run number 600 this weekend. And wouldn't that be great? And wouldn't that be great if he did it right in front of Ozzy too? Wouldn't that be fun, Robbie? A guy he used to play for. It'd be a lot of fun. But either way, reunion weekend continues here in downtown Minneapolis. When we come back, we're going to hear from members of that 91 team, plus from Ozzy Guillen, who played against the 1991 Twins, next on Fox Sports North. Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North is brought to you by your local Northland Ford dealers. Visit your local Northland Ford dealer or go to NorthlandFord.com. And by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. Reunion weekend here at Target Field continues on Fox Sports North. But we've got a baseball game to play. It's the Twins and the White Sox in game two of a three-game set. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Robbie Inspikowski. Ozzie Guillen, White Sox manager, never at a loss for words. And in 1991, he played against the Minnesota Twins. And earlier, we talked to Ozzie and asked him, what are your memories of playing against those 91 Twins? Well, you know what I mean? I think it was a pretty good ball club. You know, it was a, a bunch of superstars, a bunch of good players. I think uh, they played the game right. They pitched good. They played great defense. Uh, 
It's one thing that those guys give people a lot of headaches. And Carl Pavano tonight hopes to give the Chicago White Sox a lot of headaches. He's done it twice already this season. Carl Pavano takes a 2-0 record against the White Sox here in the target field. And the first pitch is coming up next. wouldn't find themselves in a situation where every game is important particularly after last night's loss. Tom Kelly sitting in for Burt Blyla then who's uh, when they say in the news Thank business Burt Burt's uh, off on assignment he'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, Tom of course the manager of the 91 team that's uh, being uh, honored here this weekend. Yeah thanks Dick uh, and it was uh, great seeing all the guys uh, as you did. Uh, and thanks for your help in, in doing the show well, down there today. That was great. Such a, a, a remarkable uh, season for the Twins. That 15 game winning streak seemed to set the stage for what was to follow. You guys clearly, through the regular season, had established yourselves as, as one of the best teams in baseball. Yeah, uh, they, players, uh, the streaks were sort of pushed us to the front. Right. And, uh, uh, and I screwed it up and uh, <laughs> today I, I, I always tell this story how I walked uh, I told Aggie to walk to Ripken in Baltimore. I'll never forget it. I have to take this one to the grave I, and we walked Ripken which a lot of people say is the right thing to do. And, right. And then uh, the big first baseman uh, I remember his name. I'll get Milligan. it. Again. Yeah. Randy he, Milligan. Yeah he gets two. Aggie got two easy strikes on him. and then he hung him a split finger and he hit it off the wall. So we end up, yeah. <laughs> so there goes the streak. But uh, I screwed that one up. And I, I I told Darty that story. I remind him about that story uh, because I I always felt that your closer is the man. He's the man, and I don't care who's up. There. He's going to get him out, and he's going to show the rest of his teammates he's the man, and he's going to get him out. So I reminded Darty about that story in uh, Baltimore. 
many years ago, and he remembered it. And uh, because a couple of years ago when we played the Yankees, we walked. Uh, uh, Nathan ended up walking the, the pitch to Milky Cabrera. Right. Um, we right. walked Cano. So. Yep. Yep. And uh, Milky hit that little flare, and uh, we lost. Well, so it was just one of those, re you know, little reminder stories, and you do what you want with it. You uh, will hope we get the Twins closer in in this game with the uh, White Sox sending up this Menard batting order. Juan Pierre followed by Alexi Ramirez. Paul Canerco, Adam Dunn, Alex Rios, A.J. Pierzynski, Gordon Beckham, and Alejandro Deaza in front of Brent Morrell. And Carl Pavano, in a sense, the perfect guy to throw out there because he's already had two really good games against the White Sox this year. Carl's our, our man. He's definitely uh, at home more comfortable. He looks more comfortable to me, Richard, at home than he does on the road. And, and uh, we were talking about him in the dugout. Uh, Aggie was asking me about Carl, and, I, and uh, I think he's got a wonderful change up that really goes down and away from the lefties and in on the righties. And, and uh, he throws that fastball that come back in across the plate. And uh, he's got a nice breaking ball. He can throw down and in to the lefties and away from the righties. So he certainly has got the pitches to get the job done. And, and uh, we certainly need that tonight. There's no question. Northland Ford defense for the Twins. Delman Young is in left and Art Span in center. Jason Kubel in right. Valencia, Tolbert, Kadire, and Maurer around the infield. Drew Butera doing the catching. And Michael Kadire. We've seen him in right field. We've seen him at first base. Now tonight we see him at second base. You need a scorecard to keep up with Michael. That's for sure. <laughs> Boy, he's on the move constantly. Juan Pierre will lead things off for the White Sox. White Sox got a first inning run last night, and Pavano starts him with a strike on the inside corner. Pierre's uh, put together a nice surge in the second half of the season for the White Sox as they try to move back in uh, toward. Uh, here's Maurer. And he'll flip the first, and Kadire got there. Pierre's retired. Michael made a real good play. Now, this all goes back to are we prepared to play? Are we prepared for the first play of the game? And we, we used to scream this all the time in the dugout before the game started. And, and to have uh, Joe remind Michael that uh, this guy certainly can bunt. Let's be prepared for it. And, and, the, and the boys were. So that's a, an excellent play. So one down, and here's Alexi Ramirez. There's a lot of teams wouldn't have made that play with him. And Ramirez takes a first pitch from Pavano and grounds it to left for a single. Looks like the White Sox come out swinging here. Well, the first guy running, but uh, Ramirez, he's he's one of those players that uh, I'm beginning to love to hate guy. You know, he, I think if he's on your team, you really like him, but if he's not. He, they have another guy in their lineup like that. Mr. Canerco? No, 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 no. Further down. The catcher, yeah, <laughs> Anthony. There he is, Anthony. Anthony I think. We'll oh, I should tell. I should tell you the story about last night. Oh, is that right? I had some friends sitting in the uh, Champions Club, uh, and they were obviously sitting down below. And uh, so I went and sat with them for an inning or two. And uh, so Anthony, as I call, we all know this. I call him Anthony, and and uh, so I start screaming at him, Anthony, Anthony, <laughs> and I kept ducking. He's turned, looking around. <laughs> I don't know if he was getting mad or not, but I really didn't care if he did. But, uh, we had some fun with that, and the, the two gentlemen that my, my neighbors, uh, they uh, they thought it was really fun. <laughs> one and one to Paul Canerco. All right, back to the game. Canerco and the designated hitter spot still bothered by a sore left leg. Got hit by a pitch a few games ago, swinging a miss, and it's one and two. And steady stabilizer in their lineup. Guy that uh, every manager would love to have on his in his ball club, put in the middle of the lineup, is going to knock in his hundred and some runs and, and hit close to 300, and, and you know just be that stabilizer guy, the foundation. Rounded to short, and it should be two. Tolbert, it's an air and a double play. So Pavano faces just three men in his first inning tonight.
right back in the lineup. Ron Garden hired putting together a different kind of a lineup here tonight. Pretty good record against the White Sox, particularly over the last couple of years. Here's his Menards batting order. Denard Span leading off, Joe Maurer second, Michael Kadire third, Jason Kubel, Jim Tomey, Danny Valencia, Delman Young, Matt Tolbert, and Drew Butera. And we'll all get our first look at Zach Stewart, who was inserted into the Chicago rotation. Supposed to be a Jake Peavy tonight, but they pushed him back to tomorrow and brought up Zach Stewart, who they just got from Toronto. Correct. Couple starts for the Blue Jays. Uh, sent him to Charlotte. Is that correct? Charlotte, yep. the AAA team. And uh, my understanding, he throws a little bit three quarters. Uh, he tries to make his fastball sink and run in on the righties. There it is. And uh, the lefties, he's going to throw that breaking ball down and in, change up. Usual stuff, 88 to 92 on your speed radar detectors. Backhanded by Ramirez. And Span retired one away. Northland Ford defense for the White Sox. And they've got a pretty good defensive alignment. Pierre has some speed and left, not much of an arm. Rios back in center field. Alejandro Deaza in right field for Carlos Quentin, who homered a couple of times last night. Morrell, Ramirez, Beckham, and Dunn, the infielders. And Anthony. John Krasinski behind the plate. I was thinking, Dick, that yesterday that Quentin, if he hit those home runs with the bases were loaded, we'd have been in big trouble. But yeah. Obviously, he didn't. We still had a chance. I, I thought that might be the thing that would, you know, you're always looking for a little something to help you win the game or why you win a game or don't win a game. And I thought that might be a reason why, but it didn't happen. 1 and 0 oh to Mauer. And now a strike before the wild pitch that scored the fifth Chicago run. Yes. The White Sox had six plate appearances with the bases Basically, loaded, right. and Quentin's ground ball in the first was the only one to produce one run. Correct. I remember you commented on that last night, and, and it was a, certainly a good note. And uh, just not hitting with the bases loaded, and you feel like you're supposed to score three, four, five runs, and, and that's why I thought we were going to win. I, I really did. I thought we were going to come back just because they had so many chances and, and didn't get the job done. But uh, we, we just didn't find any ways to muster up uh, any kind of rally against Mr. Burley. One and two to Maurer. And a little pop fly that'll uh, land on the warning track. If you remember back in Chicago where uh, they struck Joe out a couple or got Joe out a couple times with that breaking ball down and in. And that looked like what the pitch was right there. That same pitch down and in uh, towards Joe's back knee and his left knee. And uh, so this fellow might have been watching some video and, and seeing what he can do to get Joe out. Bouncer to short. Ramirez gets another chance and a head high hop. Out number two. Mm -hmm. Baseball tonight brought to you in Sony high definition. That's a high fastball. He changed eye levels pretty good on Joe. I, I don't know if he did it on purpose. We're going to have to figure that out as we go here. But uh, uh, the breaking ball down and in, then come up with the fastball up and away. That's textbook stuff, and I just don't know if he's good enough to do that. Might have been an accident. Base is empty for Michael Kadair. And he takes down and away, or ball one. Kadair's average just a couple of points below 300 now. There's a drive to the right field corner. Diazza will chase it and not get there. Kadair's got an extra base hit. He's got two, and he'll hold up with a double. So Kadair drops a double down the right field line with two gone in the first. This is what we're looking for, a double. Now we get a base hit. We can get a run on the board. Always with two outs, you're looking for that double. Always, you know, now you only need two hits to score a run instead of three. But Michael hit a ball like that yesterday. He got caught, if I remember correctly, right. Richard. Yep. And uh, this one had a little more juice to it, a little more slice. A little bit earlier in the evening where the ball seemed to carry just a little bit more than it does later in the evening at, at the uh, at target field. I think that's official. I think we all agree with that one. So that one got out to the corner pretty good. And, and uh, Diaz, a fella who at first look I sort of liked yesterday. I sort of liked this ball. Last night in the first inning, Jason Kubel hit a two-run home run. It was the 100th home run. Of his career, mm -hmm. that was a good one too. He, he blasted it. I watched that one from down in the uh, champion section down there, and oh, it was pretty sight going from. <laughs> he blasted it. One strike to Kubel, and now a ball. And one of the reasons the Twins have had the better of it with the White Sox players like Kubel 
Now imagine 100 career home runs, 20 of them have been against the White Sox. And it's something how those things happen, and uh, just one of those things we can't explain about the game. Little that bouncer foul. That, yeah, this ball had hit last night uh, from Jason. A little bit of a breaking ball to stay down, and Jason, he just dropped the head on it. There's, there was nights where I go to bed at night, and I used to dream about hitting one like that. <laughs> then I wake up. You hit one like that, though, right? One, not like that for it. <laughs> That's generous. High fastball up and away. Kubel strikes out. The twice come up empty in the bird. Learn the nuances of the infield. Yeah, Guardy's always teaching, always trying to get involved and in helping the infielders. Uh, I think this drill was set up for more for Trevor Plouffe than than uh, Michael, but it was uh, Michael. I think got some of the the action here, and that was good. Uh, and and Guardy's just trying. If you notice, everything's protecting themselves from you know use the base as a little protection, not get too big, keep the throws short. Here's Adam Dunn taking a strike from Carl Pavana. Guardy very takes this infield stuff very very seriously, and it's 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 his specialty, and and it's what he knows best, and, and uh, he takes it very personal. As you do work at first base, you spend a good part of your time yeah. in spring training sure. working with whoever they want yeah. to run through the first base position. And <laughs> make a couple of jokes about the minor leagues. But, uh, Joel Leffel, our uh, minor league coordinator, he he sends them over there if they got a driver's license and, <laughs> and, a, and, and a full set of teeth. He'll send them over there. He doesn't stop. He just keeps bringing them over. He's yeah, about trying to kill me over there. Two and two to Adam Dunn. Dunn, Rios, and Pierzynski to face Pavano in the second inning. Well, Pavano's had his uh, struggles as of late. The last three starts have not been good at all, and he strikes out Dunn to start the second inning. The last game that Carl Pavano won, you and I broadcast together in Chicago. That's how long ago it's been. Well, had a couple games on the road that didn't work out as well as, as we all would have liked. And I don't think Carl located the ball as well as he can do. And we all know that. And, and uh, it's a big key for him. He has to locate the ball, keep it down, change speeds, and that's how he's successful. There's no secrets, and he just hasn't been as sharp. And uh, I think tonight's the night he's going to turn it around. He's got a good crowd, a lot of enthusiasm in the building. And this is the kind of night where you're looking for your number one guy to step up and get it done. Alex Rios takes a changeup for a strike, one and one. Tim Laudner, Carl Pavano, uh, as a, a veteran pitcher would like to do, gets the ball and wants to forget all about what happened his last time out. Yeah, if you're going to be a pitcher in this league, you got to have a short memory, right, Skip? You're uh, exactly the, right, the, Tim. The key for Carl, I think, tonight is to make sure. That he, that he locates his fastball. Don't forget the four seamer. He does a very good job with the two seamer. But the other Ooh. thing is, don't forget the slider. Off 
the fence. It stays in the park, and Rios has a double. That ball looked like it was on its way out, but it hit high off the fence in front of the bullpen for a one-out double. I think he hit it right near. I don't know what I'm saying he hit it. He just missed it, Richard. I think it was down near the end of the bat, and uh, he just didn't get it clean. Yeah, towards the end, just a fraction. But you're right. That was a bye-bye baby. If it was down a little bit more in the bat. Carl left that ball up a tad and it got hit like it's supposed to get hit. So Rios, who's benched for a few games for lack of hustle, was at second with one out, and here's Pierzynski. Anthony. Let's go down there and holler out of Foul to the screen, one strike. It caused me enough headaches over the years. <laughs> Title to go down and holler at him. That's only fair. While there are Kruzinski going to first uh -oh. and home plate there umpire Todd Tishner says, "No, come back here." Wow. There we go. <laughs> well, it's not the first time Kruzinski would have uh, gotten first base without being hit, but here the home plate umpire <laughs> calls know, him back. And here, and here, you know, I I see what's going on. We all see what's going on, but I, I think Anthony would want to hit here. You know, and drive in the run. I, that's what I would rather see. And he may do that when it's all said and done here, but he's you know, happy to walk the first. Leave it up to the next fellow, Mr. Beckham, is it? <laughs> hey, Skip, yes. is that why you call him Anthony? I, I don't know, Timmy. I, I don't know. I just want to influence. Mel Pruszynski now with a 1 1 count. <laughs> Rounded foul one and two. When you, you where's Timmy? When Timmy? When you rather swing the bat, drive the run in? Absolutely, that's missing, what you're up there for. Am I missing the, something? In? You don't want to leave it for the next guy. Oh, Go ahead man. and hit a double and trade places with them. I, hey. I don't understand why you'd want to Walk drop the bat and, and yeah. go down to first base. Right. You set up the double play. Thanks for the backup, Timmy. Appreciate <laughs> it. Backup. Hmm. One and two to Pierzynski. Change up, lifted to center. Harmlessly, it appears. Span with Rio setting up for a tag. Here's Span's throw cut off by Tolbert. Second out advances Rios to third on a fly to center. So two gone, and that brings up the second baseman, Gordon Beckham. See, Skip, now AJ's going to have to go. Back in the bottom half of the inning and apologize to the umpire and make sure everything's all nice so he can get some calls for his pitcher, right? Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> He's not going to apologize. He's going to cry a little bit more about it. Swing and a miss at the fastball. One strike. Beckham had another slow start this year. He's rebounded a little bit. Fouled away, two strikes. Pavano in two starts against the White Sox this year is 2 0 with a 1.69 ERA. He has won his last three starts against Chicago going back to last year. A lot of stuff about the game of baseball when you start pulling the stats out there. It's hard to explain to people and why's and why nots. Kubel's got 20 home runs against the White Sox. And Carl's beating the, the, uh, the White Sox in, in timely fashion and goes somewhere else and has a hard time. I can't explain these things. It's it's, it's just uh, the secrets of the game that we'll never ever understand. And so it makes the game so much fun, fun to talk about. Oh, busted bat hits the slope of the mound, kicks towards Kadire, end of inning. Rios with a double, he's left at third, no score after an inning and a half.
leads off the bottom half of the inning, the bottom half of the second. 598 career home runs. That's pretty good. Looking for two. This could be a very historic weekend if he gets two more home runs. I, amongst about 40,000 other people, hope that I'm here to see it. How about that, huh, huh Dick and Skip? That's a uh, really wonderful thing to to witness that, and, and uh, we all hope we're here. And most of the fans will be here. You just have to ask them. Oh yeah, I was there. I saw it. But uh, Jimmy Tomey's a class act, and and. Uh, you can't help but not wish wish the best for this fellow. He's just unbelievable. He's an unbelievable human being. Leading off the second. Outside ball one. His former manager, Ozzie Gian, said he hopes that he's here to see it. He does he hopes certainly that Tommy doesn't beat him with a home run, but he really wants to see number six hundred. Driven to right. It's hanging in the air for Diaz one away. He's got another high fastball, which would I believe. Yeah. Dang, that, pitching the ball up, is that what this man's doing? A lot of pitches up in the zone. Let's see if we can zero in here. Oh my, there's another one right up there. Jimmy got the good part of the bat to it, but he hit that line drive. I think it had a little sink to it, a little top spin, and, and right down into uh, Diaz's glove. Need to get the other spin. There's Danny Valencia. He takes a strike on the outside corner. That's the pitch Joe Vavra told me about. You saw it there. It's a little bit of the sinker. Come back down and in to the right hand hitters. Joe's prepared for that one. He he told everybody about it. Valencia drops it to right field and Diaz comes in a couple of steps. Two down. 1991 World Championship reunion weekend comes to a close tomorrow afternoon. The weekend is presented by Mauer Chevrolet. Prior to the game tomorrow against Chicago, a special pregame tribute to Kirby Puckett beginning at 12:45. Call 800. 33 twins visit twinsbaseball.com to check on ticket availability. Delman Young takes a strike over the inside corner. What a nice afternoon that should be. Uh, get to honor uh, the center fielder who made uh, all our lives much, 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 much better and did so much for us and uh, became an icon for twins baseball. And, and, uh, I know he did an awful lot for me and my family, and, uh, and I'm sure. There's a lot of other people who have the same setting. So Raising my hand over here too. Yes, sir. Two strikes to Delman Young. He made everybody better and smarter, and more intelligent about the game. That's for sure. I, I certainly, I agree with that. But I think what, what separated him from anybody else I ever came in contact with was he made it. More enjoyable for everybody. I mean, I don't think there was a day that he didn't enjoy being yeah, at the ballpark. He had that charisma about him. He make you smile, make you laugh. He was a special individual. I've said this before. You know that you think of the doubles, the home runs, the catch, and all that. What I remember as much as anything else is those years when Twins were 20 games out. It's Arlington, Texas, and it's late August, and you walk in the clubhouse and you still heard the same cackle. It was a base hit, I think, to right field. Young pushes one through the right side of the infield, a two out single. The Twins got a two out double in the first. And we'll see what the Young's single leads to in the second. Another good pitch by this young Stewart fella. You can watch it, it it's trying to sink, go down, but it stayed up a touch. And, and uh, Delman was just very fortunate that Mr. Dunn really doesn't have an idea what he's doing over there. So that one <laughs> was able to trickle through. Yeah. And uh, let's see if uh, Mr. Tolbert can capitalize. Look out. Over Jerry White's head. Right. That one was strike. Tony Oliva bat toss. Richard, remember the old yeah, days when Tony absolutely. used to let her fly? He could really let her fly. That was reminiscent. Woo. Helicoptering yeah. over the head of Jerry White. I thought it was going to take out a divot like Mr. Herbeck took out that day <laughs> in the, uh, the uh, old timers game. Yeah, whatever that game was called, the Legends game. It, it, they could yeah, take offense to the old, old timers. <laughs> and Basically, strike. it was old timers, but we, we called it a Legends game. But I thought that bat was going to hit in the ground and, and pull that divot out. Two put, strikes to Tolbert. Put the duct tape around there to, so nobody would get hurt. Then they cordon that area off. Or they, Rest of the day. I think they put a plaque there. Uh, <laughs> two strikes to Tolbert. 
I hope he wasn't listening. Down and away. Colbert in at short. Siyoshi Nishioka getting the day off. So the Twins with really the only predictable position player in the infield from the start of the year is Valencia at third. You've got Tolbert at short. You've got Kadire at second. And Maurer at first. Yeah, we got mix and match uh, the best we can. And it's the manager's job to get the right people in the right spots to to make things work and, and put on a team on the field that has a good chance to win. And guardy has been a magician about mixing and matching the best he can to, to make things work and, and, and make it fun for the players. And so you, know, you got to tip your hat. He's had a lot of injuries this year. And he's He's at uh, every day. I know being a former manager, you walk in and you find out who can play, who can, and, and then you go to you got some thoughts in your mind that you come to the ballpark, but when it, after you talk to the trainer and find out just what's up, you, you really have to get out your pen and pencil and and, uh, and get after it and put the best team out there to give your fans the best chance to win as well as your ball club. So it's, you owe that to everybody. So you know, Guardy does a terrific job of it. Two and two to Tolbert. You saw Alexi Casilla. They say now he'll be ready to come off the disabled list when his 15 days are up. And Tolbert taps it to Dunn. Oh, right by the bag, and that ends the inning. He handled that one really smooth. The second inning of Twins Baseball is brought to you by Pentair. by Explore Minnesota. Visit ExploreMinnesota.com to plan your next Minnesota vacation today. Guessing it's a little cool or a little less humid up there on the rugged shoreline of the north shore of Lake Superior. Beautiful North Shore Scenic Drive. Highway 61 runs for 150 miles from Duluth to the Canadian border. Passes over 27 streams and rivers. And as you said, one of the most beautiful parts of this beautiful state. Alejandro Diaz leading off the third against Carl Pavano. And there's strike one. This fellow looks interesting to me, uh, Richard. I, I sort of liked him from first glance uh, yesterday. I saw him on TV a couple innings this past week, uh, but he looks like he takes good at bat and, and uh, represents himself and carries himself well. That's the follow up question. What do you see that the average fan doesn't see that makes him such an intriguing player? Not an easy out, competitive at bats, uh, confident, not fidgety at the plate. Uh, seemed well in control of himself, whether he's playing in the outfield or running the bases, and, and uh, uh, just how he handles himself physically. Pavano getting a lot of ground balls. That's a good sign. One down. Hit the ball hard. And Michael made a good play. Reach out and grab it and, and uh, get the first out. That first out is is always the most important one to get each inning. And Brent Morrell will hit. 
always felt like we we're halfway through the inning if you got the first down. I know the math doesn't work out. But <laughs> you always felt like you had a halfway through. Well, I, I, I've had this, the same feeling, especially in the ninth inning when yeah. you've got a, your closer in there. Yeah. When if he can get the first yeah. guy, absolutely. And whatever happens after that, you'd mm -hmm. like to think you're yeah. never more than one good pitch away from a double play and getting out of it. Hundred percent correct. Down the, math, the math doesn't say that, but that's exactly <laughs> what it is. So. Two and zero. Oh. This Brent Morrow fella, he's made a couple of good plays down there at third. Is, uh, he made it one yesterday. Yeah. A real nice play, backhand and uh, strong, strong throw to first. And he handled himself fairly well over in Chicago uh, a couple of weeks ago as well. His manager says he thinks, provided he can hit, to be a regular player, he thinks he could be a Gold Glove winner. He's that good with the glove at third base. Well, Ozzy would know. He's uh, one of the was one of the premier short stops in the game. He knows a good infielder when he sees one. Now three and two to Morrell. Another ground ball. Tolbert. Over the mower two down. Every out save one has come on the ground so far. You can follow the twins with MLB.com at Bat 11 for your iPhone, iPad. Android or Blackberry, get all the score, stats, highlights, live audio, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit twinsbaseball.com. Two down on the third. Here's Juan Pierre trying to bunt his way aboard. Maurer fielded it. Tonight got to the first base bag right before Pierre did. And then there's a strike. You're right what you're saying, Richard, about uh, Carl keeping the ball down, getting the ground balls. Uh, he left one pitch up uh, somewhat. To Rios, who, who blasted it off the wall, but other than that, he seems to have kept the ball down fairly well. Eight outs, uh, six ground ball outs, a strikeout, and a fly ball. And the count to Pierre quickly goes to 0 and 2. All that helps keep the players involved. They're ready to go, ready to move, ready to make some plays. And Pierre has the ball ducked under Kadire's glove, and Pierre runs through the first base bag with a two out single. As soon as I open my mouth and you know I put my foot in it, and, and uh, Michael wouldn't have made the gotten the out at first anyway, but might have short arm this one touch. It was going to be a base hit one way or another, but uh, I'm sure Michael would like to have told you that he could have caught that ball. Here's Ramirez hit a single in the first inning, grounded a single between Valencia and Tolbert. Saw the first pitch and hit it. Saw the first pitch again, hit it again. Tolbert juggles it, and there'll be no play. Third. So Valencia tried to cut in front of him and make the play, and it might have even cracked Ramirez's bat, but he gets his second hit. He sure did. He cracked his bat and was right in the right spot, sort of like the ball Delman hit that trickled through. This is basically the same thing, and and uh, I, I don't think Matty would have had to play at first anyway either. He's hit that slowly and. He probably would have thrown it, but I think Ramirez runs that well. I don't think he would have got it. So everything, four balls have been hit pretty weakly on the ground here in this third inning, but the White Sox nonetheless have a threat, two on, two out, and their top run producer at the plate. He had a nice grounder last time. Let's see if he do it again. Or a sacrifice fly, as Bert would point out to us. He likes those two out yeah. sacrifice flies. Breaking ball and a swing and a miss. They work. Good defense. <laughs> 76 for Conurco Quentin with four of them last night as his total up to 70 and a big drop off. And another breaking ball, another swing and a miss. You know, we talked a uh, member about Bert always talks about locating the ball, getting it down and away, especially to the right hand hitters. A big man like this Conurco, you saw those two pitches both down in the fourth spot. They're tough to hit. And uh, Carl can keep the ball down there. He's going to get him out. No question. Forty pitches for Pavano so far. Change up mm -hmm. on a breaking pitch. Got him. So he put him away on three off-speed pitches. Ends the inning and strands two runners.
Came to short code 234. 234. Carl Pavano with three pretty good innings leading the voting so far. Drew Buterra gets a big hit here. He'll pick up some votes. He leads off the third. To Morrell on one hop. And it's first time through the order. Zach Stewart has been uh, very, very effective. Now, what can we expect uh, well, this from the twins second time through? Thank you, Richard. It, it's a couple things we have to be aware of. We haven't seen this fellow before. Uh, second time around. You should expect or should be able to expect some better things to happen some better quality at bats uh, like Drew there is is swinging at the first pitch and hit a little bit of a dribbler and that's 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 really not acceptable. OK now I'm going to give Drew an excuse and the rest of the team an excuse because we see the shade that we're playing in the hitters are in the shade the pitchers in the shade and I always felt when you looked out and and the sunlight was still on the outfield wall. And on the backdrop, it made it a little difficult to hit. So I'm giving both teams a little bit of a break right now, and with the understanding that uh, with the six o'clock start, it's a little bit harder. Yeah. And you can see on the replay here with uh, Bernard, they're in the shade and they're looking out into the sun. And I, I always felt it was. Now you're talking to a guy to hit 180, so <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember who you're talking with here. But I always felt it was a little bit hard to hit when that was the scenario presented to the player. So, and both teams, I think it's fair to say, are having a little bit of a hard time. You know, Canerco, uh, who's one of the better hitters in yeah. our game, uh, he looked like he had no chance. Right. And we know he's better than that. So, I have to find a reason for it, and I think it's uh, it's probably the sunlight. Well, Stewart gets through the third inning. One, two, three, and five pitches. Forward slash baseball. Katie Anderson with a timely question, given the fact that Tom Kelly is here in the booth tonight. Don't make it too hard. Katie. Well, what's the biggest turning point for the Twins in the uh, this regular is, season? This is my favorite right here. Boom! Brian Harper going deep. Uh, the A's hit five home runs, as you can see on the graphic. But that that home run there, I, I thought, really made uh, a big difference in our season. I, I thought that. And we have talked about this before. That home run was, I think, one of the biggest home runs in Twins history. Really? Yeah, I do. I okay. thought that was a big turning point in our season. And Oakland was our nemesis, as we all know. And and uh, that game was uh, very important at the time. I thought that was big time swing right there by Brian Harper. The other candidates might have been the 15-game winning streak, the four-game sweep in Boston. <laughs> we already told you we don't like talking about that thing. I screwed <laughs> up. There's Hart. How about, How about that? that? Brian's a minor league manager. Dunn drops his bat after taking a call third strike. I, I just still think that some of the players are having trouble seeing. Well, 
I'm not making excuses for a guy that strikes out 300 times a season, but you know that's a good pitch, and he can't believe it. But if you know he's going to go back and look at a replay and see where it was a good pitch, and you know probably feel stupid what he's doing here. But. Well, if you sense that up here, Pavano's much closer to the action. Sure. He's on the mound. He can try to exploit that, Carl right? Carl knows. He's he's been around the block. He knows what's going on, and he's working fast like he always does. This guy's got his number. Rios bench for a couple of games has two hits. Another one with one out here in the four. Arby's and Fox Sports North giving you a chance to win a trip for two to four buyers. Pick up an Arby's. It's good mood food code card every Friday. And any participating Arby's and log on to FoxSportsNorth.com. Click on the Fan Zone tab. Enter the code for the chance to win. You've got to be a member of the Fan Zone. That's easy. It's free to join. You've got to be 18 or older, and we can't do much to help you with that. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com for complete details. Here's Pierzynski. Rios with eight steals in 13 tries. Burt was talking about this last night. The White Sox like to steal, but they haven't done it very successfully. They've stolen 48, but they've been thrown out 38. That's times. not good. No, that's not good. That's not a good percentage. And Pavano really relying on off speed. Yeah, here. that's the pitch he's looking for. He's looking for that rollover swing. And what we mean by the left hander, we want him to roll over, roll over the ball and dribble it out towards the second baseman. And here it comes down and away. That's a beauty. That's a changeup. That's nasty. That's the pitch we were talking about with Aggie today. About the what Carl. I think it's one of his better pitches. I, I really enjoy it when he's, he's got it working good. There it is again. Missing low one and one. But we want Anthony to roll one over, especially you know, try to get it at Michael or, or Joe at first, and, and uh, we can start a double play. That would be the ideal thing. I and mean, that's what Carl's trying to do. One and one. We we're talking about this off the air. You have to tip your cap to Pierzynski Correct. in terms of playing. Now, Absolutely. when we were in Chicago, and that was in early July, and that's since a month ago, they lost their backup catcher, Ramon Castro, to a broken hand. They called up another backup, Tyler Flowers. So, in a month's time, roughly a month's worth of games, Tyler Flowers has eight at bats. Like you said, Richard pointed out, it? Very good observation. AJ's he, he's taking the bull by the horns and going back there and catching. And he gets paid paid well to do it, and he, he does a good job at it. And, and uh, he's had a wonderful career. You got to tip your hat, like you said. He's done a great job. One and one with Pavano paying a little more attention to Rios. There we There's go. There's the rollover, and they'll get one, but not two. Good iron to Mauer. Pierzynski retired. Rios to second. Gordon Beckham the hitter and we have our AT&T trivia question tonight. Name the twin uh -oh. players who were on both the 1987 and 91 world championship team. Uh, we uh, named most of them and identified fielder. them as such. Left fielder center fielder. First baseman. Mm -hmm. How many do we need seven seven. Wow. Keep working your way around coaches? the infield. <laughs> was it just coaches or players or no, Randy players. Bush. How about Randy Bush. Randy Bush was one. That's four. Work your way around the outfield some more. Yeah. Newman's five. Keep working around to the left Come side. Come on, Dick. I can't. What, you remember who you're talking to? <laughs> I think the shortstop was on board. Ricky teams. Reindeer. <laughs> they called him Ricky Reindeer. He could really run. First to third, home to third. Oh boy. I'd put him up against some of the fastest guys in the league. The man could really run the bases. That tickles the outside corner one on one to back him. It wasn't much on stealing bases, but he could really run them. But you were, out there. was it you or uh, Ray Miller, your predecessor, had Lou Brock come into camp one yeah, year Luke, to work specifically yeah. with Gagney on stealing bases, yeah. and it never took. No, Lou, that was Ray who brought uh, Lou in. So just one of them things. Guys didn't have that little knack for. He could steal a base every now and then, but to, uh, to be a prolific stealer, no. But. Uh, Somebody wants to go from first to third. I'll, I'll take him any day of the week. One and two to Beckham. Pavano trying to strand Rios at second. In the second inning, he stranded him at third. A little pop up should end the inning. Kadir coming in, and that's it. Rios aboard again in scoring position. 
but the White Sox can't get the hit when they need it. On Fox Sports North is brought to you by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. And by AT&T. Michael Kadair on a one hopper back to the mound is quickly retired on the first pitch of the fourth inning. And that'll bring up Jason Kubel who's been swinging a very potent bat for the Twins since coming off the disabled list. Yeah, Jason he's a quality hitter there's no question about it. Quality guy with power. Carry the team for a while at times. Here in the fourth inning in our window concept window of opportunity. We'll see if Google can get something started here with one quick out in the fourth. Stewart has gotten 10 outs on 34 pitches. It's still uh, I, I don't want to harp on this Dick but it's 702 central time we can still see the sun out on the, on the center field wall the backdrop. And, I still think the players are having a little bit of a hard time. Great stop by Beckham at second. And two outs on three pitches for Stewart here in the fourth. You got to give this kid a lot of credit. He's come in and with a good understanding of throwing strikes and putting it in play, letting his defense work. Doing a nice job. So two down, and here's Tommy who hit a liner to right. His first time up, Diazza was there to make the catch. On the outside corner, strike. That's that pitch Joe Vavra spoke about. That, that a little bit of a two seamer that tries to run it towards the outside or in on the righties. Breaking ball, change up. Stewart came over from the Blue Jays along with reliever Jason Frazier when the White Sox got rid of Mark Tien and Edwin Jackson. Mm. Checked his swing, a foul ball, and it's one and two. Young card, he didn't do anything. Did he put his hands up? We have on the scoreboard here two and one, but I think, well, I think that's the ump. I agree with you, and I think now we're going to get into it. Here we go. And Jim Tomey checking on the count. It's now one and two. And AJ would have been having a conniption. <laughs> and taking low two and two. And he should. The umpire usually puts their hands up. Indicate. No, he just put up three and one, Tom. Well, there's no telling what the count is. Yep. Mystery count. Well, and no mm -hmm. argument from Pierzynski. No, so uh, uh, I, I gather we were wrong yep. in thinking that uh, his check swing uh, mm -hmm. uh, resulted in a foul ball. A two out walk puts Tommy aboard for Valencia. Valencia with a fly ball to right his first time up. have had a two out double a two out single now a two out walk. That's been it in terms of base runners. Lifted down the right field line and done. 
watches it drift back into the seats. We thought it hit Tommy's bat. It hit Pierzynski's glove, the inside of the umpire's knee. That's wonderful. Anthony didn't catch it. <laughs> wow. That's not good. So one strike to Valencia. Sure the umpire really appreciated that. A bouncer up the left side. Steve Little will make a friend. Two strikes. Been a little while for Valencia with a, a dozen home runs. Valencia's last home run coming on the 23rd of July here against Detroit. Very high. That high fastball we talked about earlier. This fella tries to sneak that high one by you every now and then. But that sinker, the two seam fastball looks like his pitch. And Valencia, did he hold up? He did. Mm. You know, I, I see Valencia, Tom, and I see an awful lot of. 82 83 version of uh, Gary Gaetti and Tom Bernanke. How about that? that? Good. Very good, Richard. I, I think that's correct. A little bit not ready, not sure of themselves, quite sure of themselves yet. And a little more confidence, a little more trust in their ability to stay back, see the ball. And and again, uh, without making too much of a fuss here, I think it's hard to see. Valencia retired. The Twins leave Tommy aboard. We've got four scoreless innings. I'm ready here at Target Field, and Rick Aguilera will be our guest next. Pretty quick innings here at Target Field. Robbie and Smikowski, Tim Laudner, Tom Kelly filling in for Burt Blyth, and Burt will be back tomorrow. Dick Bramer here, and happy to be joined as we get started here in the fifth inning with Rick Aguilera, the closer for the 91 World Championship Ball Club. Diazza shows bunt, takes ball one. And since Tom is here, I'd like you two to tell the story about how, Rick, you were anointed as the closer. <laughs> Of the twins. So let's, let's start with your version, Tom. <laughs> my, my very quick. <laughs> it was. It was a, a phone call. I called him from the office in the dome. And uh, Aggie, I, I said, TK or whatever I said. And I said, uh, you're going to be the closer next next year. And pretty much 
hung up. <laughs> that was it? That was, that was close. <laughs> I don't think I said hello. Did I say hello? Yeah, kind of. Just a token? Kind of, sort of. And that, that, that is the truth. My, my wife answered the phone. Sherry and, answered? Uh, yeah. It said, uh, okay. it's TK. I said, talk to you. Yeah. Well, Aggie says, uh, <laughs> you know, we're weird and kind of, he's gone. And, well, we're kind of, you know, looking over our staff. And, well, we feel you'd be best suited to be uh, closer next year. And we know you'll do what's best for this team. And, <laughs> See you in spring. Click. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I was that nice? Yeah. Well, no, yeah, no. Yeah. And so well, I hung the phone up, and Sherry says, uh, what ticket you want? I said, I think I'm, I think I'm going to be the closer next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, cool. that, that's how it started. Well, Pavano fell behind. It worked Morrell, out. It worked out. It worked, you, it worked out very well. Thanks to Sorry, you. Sorry, Richard. I would say so. Uh, Pavano fell behind Morrell 3-0 and in the third before filling the count, getting him on a ground ball. Now it's 3 and 0 again. And he misses. And puts him aboard with a one out walk. Well, it worked out well for the Twins, and Rick, it worked out well for you. That was kind of your role for the rest of uh, your career. And uh, w was it a tough transition for you to make at all? Um, I mean, the results would say no, but I mean, in terms of what, how you had to change your preparation. Not necessarily, no. Uh, I think you just really. Understanding was really aware right away that I didn't need to, you know, take 15 minutes to get loose like I did as a starter. For some reason, you felt you had to throw a long time right. and all that kind of stuff. It just really was more of being mentally prepared, and you know, your adrenaline gets going pretty quick when the phone rings and you got the next inning. You kind of, you either you got plenty of time to get loose, or sometimes you get called in the middle of the inning. You got to get uh, loose and you know maybe eight, ten pitches. So it's really more of a mental preparation, and with that, it's kind of more of the. Um, you know, having a tough day and just kind of getting over it. Base hit to right. Morrell will round second, and he'll hold up there. Wow. With Kubel Thank having you. to run toward the line. He didn't wasn't in real good position to make yeah. a good throw, but Morrell holds up at second nonetheless. Yeah, that's I don't personally I, I've been disappointed if if I was manager of Mr. Morrell right there. The ball's hit not very hard. It got through. No one, as you pointed out, that the right fielder has to go to his left and then come back and throw the ball to the right. That that's a hard throw to make, and for him to stop at second with one out on the board, uh, with no outs, two outs, it's different. But with one out, you got you got to go. There's no no way to sugarcoat that. He, he's got to be, and he would have been easy for sure. easy, but uh, sure. for some reason he held up. I don't know why. Here's Alexi Ramirez, a pair of singles with two men aboard and one out. Strike on the outside corner. He must have had a bad experience somewhere along. The <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little replay. Oh my goodness! Well, he was I looking at Jeff Cox's coach. Well, I think once you're on first and you see the ball hit the way it was, it, that should be an automatic read to oh, oh, that no. you go. Yeah, you don't need to coach for that one. One strike to Ramirez. Sometimes the players get taught to rely on the coaches, and, and that's not. One play there where you need to rely on a coach. Big swing and miss, two strikes. The phone call you guys talked about actually became before the 1990 season. You were the closer in '90, and then the Twins won the World Series in uh, in '91. Let's see what Pavano uh, can uh, pull out here to get Ramirez. Maybe even get a ground ball again and a chance for the Twins to turn a double play. Two strikes to the Chicago shortstop. That's in the center. What score to one? Span with the catch. And our co-analyst here, Rick Aguilera, says that's the difference in Morrell stopping at second, going to third. That ball drives him in if he's at third base. Aggie's absolutely correct. That should be a run on the board, easy. And it's not. And this is the kind of little things that win or lose ball games, uh, and sometimes force you to play game 163. That's right. And uh, that's why we, we as coaches and we always try to profess let's run the bases aggressively make the plays you're supposed to make all these little things that become maybe uh, nuisance once in a while that you're why are you hollering at me again. Well that's the reason I'm hollering at you because you're supposed to be on third and we're supposed to have a run on the board and your teammate's supposed to have an RBI and he doesn't so. Uh, it's it just part of the game, and Morrill's a, a young player who's learning how to play, and, and uh, I'm sure Ozzy's going to explain the facts of life to him when he gets in the dugout. 
remind him that he needs to be on third base on that ball. Change up high to Canerco, who's bounced into a double play and waved at three breaking pitches to strike out in the third. As we view in the background now, the sun is gone and the black, the backdrop is, is a solid color. And uh, so the hitters should have, I can't give them any more excuses. I have to just say the pitchers are dominating the game. White Sox had ample opportunity last night with all those opportunities with the bases loaded and didn't get much done. And they've had the better scoring opportunities again here tonight, including this chance with runners at first and second. Now with two out and two and one. Yes, Aggie, what the uh, one most important thing about the reunion is, and, and I'm curious to hear what his answer is. One most important thing? Mm -hmm. It couldn't have been that breakfast we had the other day. No, well, that, was, that was good, that, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah, that was that was that was yeah. a good morning. That, yeah, that was, was a nice was way to kick off the mm -hmm. weekend. A little early wake up call, but mm -hmm. you know it was it was worth it. We got fed well, but um, you know I I think you're just being able to come back together as a ball club and, mm -hmm. and base you know, hit left reminisce. field. Young's going to charge. Morrell's going to come around third, and the White Sox get their run after all. And of course, it comes off the bat of Canerco. I think Carl left that one a little bit in. It looked like it got a little bit too much of the plate. I think it did. He had the ball on the outside to uh, Canerco in the previous at bat, Richard, and it looked like it just got a little bit too much of the, the plate here. Yeah. He pitch before that, too. He's the ball away. Mm -hmm. just bit. Okay. Well, let you finish your answer. Well, no, I, I think it didn't, but just, just getting together again, it's, just, it's amazing how it all kind of comes back to you and being able to see those highlights. Like, that's where I got goosebumps uh, yeah. during the highlight of uh, Gino getting that base hit last night. And but uh, and then be able, I think it was great to be able to um, just share our thanks to the fans and their support uh, right. throughout that season. It was, you know, to be able to be embraced like that. And, and, and the community has always supported the Twins very well. And, and um, it was just a, a very special year, as you, know, you would share and any of us would share that. Front runner Experience goes and Gutierrez throw gets by Valencia and the run's going to score. So it's two nothing Chicago with Valencia well, unable to catch Gutierrez throw. I'm not much on sugar coat nag, but we can't let this ball go by, can we? No. This no. ball, I think it was a good throw, and Danny had his glove down to catch it. And Richard, did just get by him, or he just miss it? We're gonna have to. to make a catch the glove. Didn't catch it, correct? There we go. There we go. Ooh, fine. Yeah, we got to get that. At least get that ball in front of him. So two to nothing, Chicago. And error will be charged to Valencia. He gets a stolen base for them. And he gets a stolen base. Well, one and one to Dunn. And they've uh, given an error to Butera, but he threw it right on the bag. Oh, so no. that I think will be changed. One and one to Adam Dunn. That's only fair. Snap bat and Maurer can't make the play. Dunn will get a new stick. I wanted to ask you, Aggie, about the transition from starter to closer. And, and early in the 1990 season, there was a disappointment, a missed save opportunity. And the story goes that you were told, you know, be a stand up guy as much when the Save is blown as opposed to when you succeeded, and that was a really kind of a, an important, although the loss hurt, an important experience for you in your transition as closer. Yeah, it, it, clearly, and, and you know, be, being able to, you know, hear from TK and hear from Suchi and those kind of things, you know, it helps. And, and you know, I we got to say goodbye. Okay, well, thanks to Rick <laughs> another, another for stopping by. <laughs>
State Lottery tickets. I've got Brian here from Rochester, Sergey, circled by TK tonight in the Minnesota State Lottery Winter Circle. And guys, uh, TK and Dick, um, the trip sixty dollars for the tickets, hundred dollars for the hotel. Yeah. And they're running wild. They got the wives and girlfriends at home. They got a little boys' weekend weekend here in downtown Minneapolis to so check it all out. So uh, good stuff there, TK. Let's get us some diamond cutters now, okay? Ooh. Delman Young driving it to left. Pierre will play it off the wall. Young will try for second. The throw to the bag, and Young is out. So it's, Pierre yeah. plays the carom and lobs a throw in on target, and Young is thrown out. It was a good throw by Pierre, and, and Delman, in my mind, did the right thing. He's got to go there. Pierre's not known for his throwing arm. And uh, Delman hit this ball really hard. The pitch was down and in, and he smoked it. It's no different than the pitches that this fellow has been throwing earlier in the game. And I just think we see a little bit better right now. So the, the White Sox hit the ball a little bit better the last inning. But uh, I have no complaints about Delman going there. I, I think that's a good play. He has to go. And you saw a pretty good call by Angel Hernandez. The tag right before Young got to the bag. Here's Tolbert. Outside ball one. Tolbert lashes one to center. And the Twins with a couple of well hit balls. They went through four innings, didn't hit anything as hard as Young and Tolbert uh, have here on the back to back to bats. Yeah, Joe Maurer, uh, his last at bat hit the ball very hard at the second yeah. baseman. Yeah. So uh, I, I just think it's a combination of uh, we getting to see this fella the second go round, third go round, and, and the backdrop uh, you can see much, much better than you could the first part of the game. So it's 7 uh, 20. And uh, game time, pretty yep. much, yep. for a regular night. Here's Butera, smothered by Pierzynski. The White Sox have inserted Zach Stewart into the rotation to give Jake Peavy an extra day. Have to be thrilled with the results so far. And now Stewart, pitching with a lead for the first time tonight. Peavy might be upset that he isn't pitching tonight. <laughs> the six o'clock start might have been a little easier. I think it's pitched a day game tomorrow, so we'll see. Curious why they pushed him back. It, uh, that's a good word for it, and it came as a surprise to a lot of people. Tolbert takes mm. off, and Butera shoots a foul. A little hit and run action. Guardy's not going to sit on his hand. He's going to try to make something happen. Good candidate for the hit and run, Drew Butera, the catcher. Find a, make, a way, even if he does make an out, to be a productive out. If Tolbert can get down to second or. Drew get one through the infield, get first and third, and try to switch the momentum of the game around a little bit. And Tolbert diving back to the back. All the players you managed, who did you have the most confidence in in a hit and run situation? We, we did a lot with our catchers. Uh, I, I sort of insisted that they could get the bat on the ball just to make a productive out, not ground into a double play or strike out or whatever. We try to get the bat on the ball. Make something happen positive, and it, it, it helped them. I think as a an individual, as a teammate, and, and it helped their teammates. So, I, I, I insisted that the uh, catchers do a good job with the hit and run. Now Tolbert diving back to the bag. The ball hit either him or glo uh, Dunn's glove. At any rate, it'll be a Chicago error advancing Tolbert into scoring position. Well, he, this Stewart fell. He took enough chances throwing the ball over there to Dunn as it was, and, and here Dunn, he, he just don't, he didn't catch it. You're giving the air to Dunn. Then. I would. I didn't think it was that. Big. It wasn't a perfect throw, but it's certainly a throw you would expect your first baseman to get the glove on. Two and one to Butera. That hit him. Look at this, Nancy. So Butera will go to first, and Stewart. Pitching with a lead, having a tough time, but also, Tom, it's the first time he's had to pitch with a base runner aboard and less than two out. Yeah, it's uh, he looks a little different, doesn't he? he? Threw the ball poorly, well, somewhat poorly over to first. Now he hit uh, Drew. I'm sure he didn't want to do that. So, the bottom of the, well, the last two guys hit the ball hard. Things change. Things change a little bit. So, here we go. Let's see if we can make something good happen now. Bernard Span has hit a couple of ground balls, one to short, one to second. Span just one hit since being reactivated. And he mm -hmm. takes a strike. 
Still a good pitch for this young man, Stewart. He keeps the ball down and away, gets it running away from the lefty. Uh, as uh, Carl Pavano was looking for that rollover swing, uh, this is what Stewart's going to be looking for, and AJ's going to be looking for. Throw that pitch so we can get that rollover. Or they can get the rollover. Slice down the line, but it's turning left. Two strikes. Bernard did a decent job of going the other way with that pitch instead of hooking it. Trying to avoid rolling over the pitch. Just one strike out for Stewart. E3 on the pickoff, Richard. Okay. Which we thought. Thank you. Stewart struck out Kubel back in the first inning, and he's ahead of Span now, 0 and 2. Oh. Chops it to the right side. Out there, and Span will beat the relay. So first and third, two away, and Maurer coming to the plate. Well, this ball bounced just enough to slow it down. Where uh, Beckham made a real good play getting the out at second. Ramirez did the right thing by holding on to the ball. He couldn't get an out. Uh, Bernard got too much speed. So the ball was hit just slow enough where uh, uh, double plays was not normal. And Drew's going to make a real nice slide here. Look at him eyeballs. Drew's going to try to take out Ramirez. Drew remembers he just got hit with a pitch, so he's going to return the favor any way he can. Ramirez did a good job of jumping out of the way. Stewart retired Maurer in the first and third inning with the bases empty. Now there are two men on and two out. We need to, uh, JoJo to come through here. See if we get first and third, we get a run on the board, we keep the inning going. You like to see out of your players, Richard. Uh, Drew got hit with a pitch, and I'm sure it hurt. And he went down there in the second. He was going to do something about it. That, that was pretty good. I, I like that. That was the kind of thing you want to see out of your players. I know Mr. Molitor, he would have he would have been jumping up and down and <laughs> down there like that. He likes that kind of stuff. Two strikes and another throw to first, Span getting back. Paulie sitting down in front of us with, with his son. Enjoying the evening. Paul just come back from Rochester where he watched the Red Wings for a week. I didn't get a full update report from him, but uh, I know he was there. Two strikes to Maurer. Span takes off the pitches inside. There's no throw, so now that hit to the outfield. If it comes, here we go. We'll tie the game. Speaking of Rochester, Justin Morno back in the lineup went 0 for 4 last night. So far tonight, 1 for 2. That's our Sanford Health injury Good. report. Progress. It's moving forward. And significantly, I think playing first base. He's not DH. Yeah, they're important. running him out at first base. Get out there and play. Get the get the baseball movements going. Get the body moving, moving in the right direction, making the plays, doing the things you have to do in the field to be uh, a player. And, and uh, Justin's going to do all that. Bauer fights off a tough pitch to There's stay alive. A, uh, sorry, Dick, uh, but that's that pitch we were talked about uh, a week ago in Chicago, ten days ago, whatever it was, where PV threw them pitches down and in, and that looked like the same one right there. And then Joe got the bat to it, so. He fight that one off. Wait for another pitch that he can that he can put in play with a little authority. Stewart trying to complete the fifth inning with the lead. One and two to Mauer. Mm. Now cost him a bat. Nope. Had that, kind of Had that ring to it. You're yeah. right. You're yeah. right, Richard. I agree. You saw a graphic there with Joe's uh, numbers with two strikes on them, but let's be honest here. How many guys would you take before Joe Maurer that you would want up with uh, in this situation? So if he can come through here on one and two. Mm. Came inside, got a foul tip, strike three. Yes. Twins with a couple of hits, a hit batter. They strand two. Still two nothing.
they are both on their way out. And we'll see if the Twins can even this series at a game apiece with Alex Rios leading off the sixth for Chicago. Dick Bramer, Tom Kelly joined by third baseman Mike Pagliarulo from the 1991 World Championship Minnesota Twins. Thanks. Is this your first time at Target Field? Uh, this is my first time that uh, I'm watching a game here. Yeah. I'm sure. yeah. Last year it was great watching the thing being built. And uh, it was super. I had to walk around with those hard hats, though. That mm. bothered me a lot. Rios, Pierzynski, and Beckham to face Pavano here in the sixth inning. Well, what do you think? Pretty nice place, isn't it? Beautiful. I mean, there's, there's not a bad there's not a bad seat in the house. We're up, <laughs> we're up uh, in the uh, suites and uh, left field. I was just up there with Crow mm -hmm. talking about the game. It was great. You ever feel crowded and you always get a good view. Crow mean Terry Crowley, our hitting instructor, That's did him. a wonderful job for us. Worked hard. Always. Same thing for Rios. And a strikeout. That you know, Metro we, Dome, we didn't have any uh, options. <laughs> so we made one. We, we made, made an option out there. <laughs> out Thanks field. to uh, the Alex. hole, right? <laughs> Alex, our ground crew guy, helped us out. Yeah. And uh, Alex works here now, Target Field. Yeah. Saw Alex before. He's yeah. been around longer than a lot of us, obviously. Ground crew is important. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Alex. people don't know all the people associated with winning, correct? <laughs> Absolutely. One time that'll bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Mikey was uh, did a wonderful job for us in, in 91. Played third base along with uh, Scotty Lass. A little platoon system there. It worked out well. And, and uh, of course uh, up in Toronto. I remember his family was all there. That was quite an evening. He was. Finally <laughs> did something. <laughs> you know, his family, they're leaving one at a time, two at a time. They're not even staying. They're going. They can't take it no more. And uh, finally, Mikey uh, put one out into the night and, and got it done. That was one of the memorable moments. When we had the 87 reunion and, and the family, playoff. family did come back they in did. after he hit them. Yeah. Well, they threatened me if I didn't do anything. <laughs> You're done. You're done, yeah. kid. We're done with you. Bounce they weren't the, the only side. ones. <laughs> Tolbert on target tomorrow. When we had the 87 reunion, Tom, we talked a lot about the pickoff play at third mm -hmm. base against Detroit, how that was the turning point. And I think similarly, Mike's home run that, that swung the series back in the Twins' favor. Twins had lost game two here at the Metrodome to Juan Guzman, and then Pags hits the home run, and suddenly you're up, mm -hmm. and, you, and you win one on the road and get Correct. that winning feeling back. That was a big uh, hit. And, and, uh, certainly, uh, Mike put a good swing on it and, and got the job done for us. And uh, Usually playing that late into the game, that was unusual for you. You only played what five, six innings. I had to get you out of there. Hey, I was, I was getting ready the entire game on that <laughs> in the, underneath the stands there on, the, on that tee. <laughs> but I thought it was interesting too because they had an extremely oh. talented team, and oh it just seemed, you know, that the next day they just were there and, and they didn't really show up, and we just took advantage of that. Boy, it, and it's hard to explain momentum, but. Um, you know, they had a bunch of great players. Boy, they sure did. That. After that, Richard, you know this stuff way better than I do. That they won the next year, 92, 92 and 93. 93. Yeah. yeah, like Mikey pointed out, they they were a talented bunch. Oh, that Guzman fellow, he was some kind of nasty. Mm -hmm. That was a yeah. slider that he threw that broke oh, straight down. Yeah, yeah. Right, it looked like a fork ball. Everybody would argue slider. exactly what that pitch was. Jerry Kerr. Yeah. <laughs> he had a lot of stuff back yeah. then. You're allowed to use that on the mound. <laughs> it was in style too. Back up. Shag. <laughs> Popped up. Should end the inning with Kadir out in short center field. Always great. Huh? Now Span calls him off. Thanks again. Always great to see Mike Pagliarulo. Enjoy the rest of the weekend and congratulations again on providing us all so many great memories. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike.
He can throw 95 miles per hour. And he's completed five innings with the lead. And if the Twins don't turn this game around, he'll get his first major league win. We'll know that about him too. Michael Kadiner starts the sixth, though. And he takes low ball one. I know one thing, his fastball moves. Got nice movement to it. There's a strike, one and one. 92 as advertised on the radar gun. Just what we were told, and that's just what it is. Chopper to Shark. Easy play for Ramirez. I could I almost beat that out. That was a very close play. It sure was Michael running the ball out. And, and every manager and coach will ask you to do the same thing and just ask the players to run the ball out. Might pay off. Mm. I'm not so sure he didn't beat that. Yep, he's out. I think he was out. One down. Here's Kubel. A strikeout and the bouncer to second. Twins need a jolt here. They need to put some things together. There's, and a, there's a liner to right, and that'll sink in front of Diazza. So Kubel continues to sting the ball. There's hardly a day that goes by he doesn't do something like that twice. You're absolutely right, Richard. He stung that. That was it hard. That ball had a good ring to it. TNT trivia question the Twins players on both World Championship teams, seven of them. We missed one. No pitchers. Gene Larkin's the one that we didn't mention, I think. Gino? Yeah. Oh, say it ain't so. And he ended the, the 91 World Series. Here's Tommy, a liner to right and a walk. Pulled mm. under the glove <laughs> of Dunn. <laughs> and Kubel around second, go to third. Tommy is going to glide into second base. And the Twins get runners in scoring position with one out. Jimmy hit this ball hard. He, he smashed it. But I don't know what that first baseman over there. We we'll have to watch this one again. Good solid swing. Uh, well, Mr. Dunn is is probably a little bit out of position. And in fairness to him. It's a DH written next to his name, and he's substituting over there for Canerco. And, and sometimes the ball finds you, and that's just the way it is. And that ball is hit very hard. Let's not misunderstand. Jimmy hit that ball hard, but I think most of us would like our first baseman to at least get some leather to that. Knock it down. Anyway. Something. Here's Valencia, middle infield. In fact, the third baseman playing back. Done even with the bag at first, and Valencia swinging through the seat. Strike one. It's that breaking ball down and away. It's a nice pitch. Carl Pavano's thrown that same pitch tonight numerous times. This young man, Mr. Stewart, has done it. Let's see Benny drive on the right central. There we go. Up the middle of base hit. How far can Tony go? Will be held at third. And Valencia drives in one and sends Tony to third base. Robbie uh, hinch has been waiting for that diamond cutter, and there it is. Finally got the diamond cutter. Three straight hits against Stewart. And here comes Don Cooper. We just had a nice note pass to us, uh, Richard. That Mr. Tomei now has a 10 game hitting streak. Yes. And the tying run at third with one away. And Delman Young, who has two hits against Stewart, comes up in a key spot. Quick trip to the mound by a guy who uh, pitched for the Twins way back Cooper? in the days yeah. of uh, Met Stadium. And, uh, at the Metrodome as well. And widely regarded as one of the better pitching coaches in the game. Like the way Danny handled himself there. He got the breaking ball again and he it stayed up uh, just a touch, but he did a good job of hitting it up the middle. Uh, looking for him to drive some balls up the middle, right center. A little more competitive at bats. Bouncer wide of third. And that's exactly what uh, Stewart wants here. He wants Young to beat it into the ground someplace. Well, they're playing back at, uh, you know, with Jimmy running from third. I, I don't know what Mr. Morrow's got in his mind, but, uh, you know, the shortstop and the second baseman, I think they have to go to first. Mr. Dunn, he's obviously holding the runner on. He might go, he might go for two. Depends how the ball's hit. Delman smashed one off the fence in left and was thrown out trying to stretch it into a double. One and one. 
And two middle infielders obviously going to go for the double play. Third baseman, he'd go either way with the ball. Depends if he hits to his left, he'll probably go to second. If he hits it to his right, he'll probably come home. Old foul, one and two. Hanger? No, I don't know. Demon looked like he was waiting for the ball on the inside part of the plate, and, and he turned on it really good. It's almost reminiscent of the ball he hit uh, off the wall. Let's see. Let's see a replay. Maybe we can dissect it a touch. Yeah, it's a breaking ball, but Demon was very quick on it. Just maybe a touch too quick. Looks one like he's almost two. zeroed in, Richard. Checks his swing. Two and Ooh. two. And then, like Valencia's check swing uh, earlier in the ball game, very close. Looks like he held up. Good call. Got to give the umpires credit when they deserve it. He pointed that out before with Mr. Angel Hernandez. At second, uh oh, squirted to the right side. Young's going to have to hurry, and he'll. Oh, they call him out. An inning-ending wow. double play. A very close play, but the White Sox turn a big double play to keep the lead. Sox striking first with terror runs in the fifth inning. Paul Conurco with a base hit to left. And the base hit coming with two outs in the inning. And then in the Adam Dunn at bat. Ruby Terra's throw right to the glove of Valencia. He didn't catch it. Pierre stole third and came in to make it 2 to nothing. And then in the sixth, the Twins on a Valencia base hit. Cut the lead in half, holding Comey a third. And a very close double play call. And as we saw in replay, First base umpire Jerry Davis made the right call. Yeah, he sure did. And we'll show it to you in a second. Here is Deaza leading off the seventh for Chicago in a two to one game. And a strike. Done with a stretch right there. It's a good call. Ball disappeared in the glove. Been a long way, but very foul. Two strikes. Diazza, Morel, and Pierre facing Pavano, who's come up with a very strong start again against the White Sox. One earned run, one unearned run. Twins starting the night nine games behind Detroit. White Sox six and a half games back. Just missing the inside corner. They keep looking into the bullpen, Richard, to see if the Ozzy maybe think six innings was enough for this young man, Mr. Stewart, but. Apparently not because he's going back out there. Sliced foul. If I was in his shoes, I'd be getting a little nervous. Some of them balls are hit pretty hard. And Tolbert, and Butera, and Span, the eight, nine, and one hitters do up in the seven. <laughs> I bet that's probably one part of the, the job you don't miss, no. right? It, it's the hardest part of the job is when to change the starting pitcher, that's for sure. No question about it. 
Two and two. And yes, you're correct. Young man's going back out there. There's no doubt about that. Check swing on a foul. Diaz is having a good at bat, Richard. What we talked about earlier about this young man, he looks looks okay to me. He looks like he's stable, somewhat sure of himself. Now, if we Carl could strike him out, bouncer to short. Tolbert digs it out, throws to first, one away. Great collector's item now available at Best Buy and the Twins merchandise outlets and at TwinsBaseball.com. A compilation of the full broadcast. Of the seven games of the 91 World Series, along with a brand new documentary entitled Magic in Minnesota. They're packaged together and they're now on the shelves. Get this great collection and get ready for the 91 reunion weekend. One more day coming up tomorrow. All seven games of the 91 World Series and Magic in Minnesota will be available at Best Buy and Twins Merchandise Outlets and at TwinsBaseball.com. Be a wonderful uh, gift for some of the younger people that are watching this evening. Uh, Sure, their dads remember, uh, maybe granddads remember the '91 team, and, and be a nice little gift for them at Christmas time or Father's Day, or, or just in general. I'm curious, how often have you watched that World Series? Uh, not either that often. Any, any part of it? Uh, not often, Richard. Not as much as maybe you, you might think, but uh, I can remember a few big snow days. In the winter, <laughs> yeah, where you're sort of, it's too cold to go out there, and not, I'm not going out there. I mean, well, let's throw the, let's throw the old uh, VCR and fire it up and, and get, get her going. Off the glove of Kadir into center field, Morell has a one-out single right, right over the mound. I kept talking because I didn't think you wanted to, to describe that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be curious to hear you try to describe that one. That went over everybody. Kadir tried to backhand it. And it Kicked off his glove into short center, and now you have Juan Pierre. And Michael didn't make the play, and, and he's not. It, I don't think he's going to get it out anyway. I, I think that's going to be a hit, and uh, Michael's laying it all out there for us. That's for sure. And so you, you, we can't have any complaint. If he doesn't make this play or doesn't make that play, the man comes to play the game, and, and that's what it's about. And uh, the two plays that he that maybe he hasn't made tonight, I don't think he's going to get the out anyway. There's really been no harm. A little delay here. Drew Butera with an equipment uh, problem. Hearing about it from uh, Ozzy Gian. Stewart has uh, more than held his own here in his first appearance for the White Sox. Yeah, Outside maybe, ball one. Maybe over in Toronto, he maybe wouldn't have gotten this opportunity that he's getting here tonight. I, I don't know, but. But he, he certainly seems to be in control of his emotions and, and handling the situation, as you pointed out, Richard. He, he's done a nice job. One and zero to Pierre, and now a strike. Well, I mean, you see it happen so often. We saw it happen earlier this year with Anthony Swarzak, just kind of Correct. thrown into the rotation. He almost no hit the Angels. Unbelievable what can happen. So that's what makes the game such a great game. From day to day, you don't know what's going to happen out there. Least expected no hitter coming from an Anthony Swarzak. Who would have thought it? Chopper right side. And Kanaya right. underhands it to Maurer, and Morell goes to second, two away. Excellent play here by Michael. Come get the ball. Stick the glove out. Transfer. Good transfer into his bare hand. Nice underhand flip to Joe. Can't do this play any better than Michael just did it. So two down, a runner at second, and here's Alexi Ramirez. Ramirez with a pair of singles and a fly ball to center. It's fly ball to center. Hmm. He didn't get an RBI, in. did he? Nope. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch. Is that off speed delivery down and away? I'll try this out for size. It may be yes, full sir. of water. Yes, sir. Pavano. As a kind of a right handed version of what we saw last night from Mark Burwell. Yeah, well, I think Carl, uh, I, I really think Carl can spot the ball when he's on a little. And Burley's very good, though. Right. I would love to have him. 
But uh, I, I like Carl. I think he's got a little more. I, I like Burley as well. But I think Carl has a little more pizzazz to his pitches than right. Burley is, is a, sort of has to spot it perfectly. I think Carl can get away with it a little bit more than maybe Burley can. But uh, they're both very talented. I'd, I'd love to have both of them. No question. Two strikes to Ramirez. Ground ball hit right at Kadir. White Sox leave another runner in scoring position. It's a two to one ball game. Time now for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Medica. North is brought to you by McDonald's. Right now, you can get 20 crispy chicken McNuggets for just $4.99 at McDonald's. And the new Quest five-year price lock promise. Visit quest.com slash promise for details. No way, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes around at the old oh. You know, when we have Ooh. these reunions, you know, and we see the players we haven't seen for a while, we say, boy, you haven't changed a bit. Most of the time we're lying, right? <laughs> but how about Wayne Terwilliger? He, he's, he's, he's something. He's a one of a kind. Tweet he, something special. He honestly doesn't look any different, I don't think, than when he, he was coaching first base for the Twins at 91. And he was carrying that bag around again today. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He just won't let go of that bag. One and one to Tolbert, and he chops one. Great stop at third by Morrell, and Tolbert will get a single. But he took a double away, and made Tolbert hustle down the line to get a board at all. Yeah, Morrell, that was a nice play. You called it exactly right, Richard. That was a heck of a play. Scott got the job done. He made a halfway decent throw, but Maddie's got too much speed. White Sox bullpen just now starting to deactivate. We'll see what Butera is asked to do here. We're running out of outs here, but do you ask Butera to bunt? I was just going to say I think we're going to have a bunt order here for sure. Okay. We're going to make the White Sox make some kind of play, and I'd be very surprised if he didn't bunt it towards first. <laughs> Try to make uh, Dunn uh, get involved in the play somehow, a sacrifice advancing Colbert to second base. Good job by Drew. Getting the job done there, getting the ball down, but to the to the first base side. Make Dunn feel the pitcher. You see the pitcher, he just broke right to the first base. There's the Pepsi Max in game box door three times through the order for the Twins, and not much uh, to show uh, in their first appearance against Zach Stewart, who's going to be taken out of the game here. And Chris Sale, who saved the ball game last night, coming in a little earlier tonight. In the seventh inning with the tying run at second and one out.
Beyond's on deck circle. Beyond deck circle currently 3,000 members strong and growing. You can sign up today and take advantage of exclusive benefits and future season ticket opportunities. If you'd like to join or for more information, call 833 Twins or visit www.twinsbaseball.com today. White Sox had a rough start uh, with their bullpen this year, but it, over the last three, four months, it's been very, very good, yet it's been very, very fluid. Sale pitched in the ninth last night, and now he comes in on the seventh. Yeah, well, it's the right time for him because we got two lefties here, Span and Maurer. This is Ozzy needs to uh, get two outs on the board because he doesn't want uh, Michael Kadiah facing this fellow. So um, he brought his fella in here, get these two lefties out, and let's see what happens. But he threw the ball really well last night, finished the game up. Uh, Stewart, wonderful start, six and a third, 79 pitches. That's pretty good, Richard. 55 strikes. Some speed at second in Tolbert and Span at the plate. Over three. He takes a strike at the knees. A lot of times you get in these positions and, and you, you're sort of in as a manager, pitching coach, you, you got your team in the spot where you want to be. So uh, you got a good start from your starting pitcher. He gave us a good chance. And now we have a, one of our better left hand pitchers facing two lefties. So whatever happens, happens, but you got you got the people in position to be successful. And that's what the manager's job is, put the players in position so they can be in effect, have an effective outing or, or an at bat or whatever it may be. And, and this sale fellow is certainly in that spot right now. One and one to span. He's seen a 97 and a 98 mile per hour fastball. Chop to the right side. It'll advance the runner of base, but it's also the second out, two down. So Maurer again with the a chance. A chance here. He came up with two men on and two out in the fifth. And Stewart struck him out. He faced Sale last night and hit a ground ball to first. Being that uh, you know Denard grounded out there, and like you pointed out, Richard, he did advance the runner, which which adds a little more pressure to that breaking ball. We saw Sale throw that breaking ball slider last night. He threw it, throws it really hard. He throws it down. So we have to be aware now for the Matty Tolbert's going to do a good job with that. He's going to watch for that slider and down in the dirt and uh, be ready to go. So uh, even though Denard did make an out, it at least was somewhat of a productive out. Hour takes a breaking ball strike one. Saw the White Sox get a big insurance run last night on a wild rush late in the ball. Correct. Absolutely right. And that's what we're talking about. You know, if you, you know, you're making out at least some kind of production out of it. At least put a little more pressure on the opposing team. Bringing ball wide, Brzezinski catches it low. I'd like to be born with this fellow's arm, Richard. Mm -hmm. I have ran into him today uh, as he was walking to the ballpark. One and one here to Maurer. Tolbert inching away from third. And there's a breaking ball over one and two. And I said, you must have gone to some spring training games, you know, from Fort Myers there in sure. college and everything. He said, yeah, he remembers with his uh, college roommate going to a spring training game of the Twins against the Red Sox and imagining, now, how in the world would we face these guys? Look at these guys. And four months later, after being drafted, he was facing them. Maurer, a little slow roller, and Ramirez. Has time to fire to first, and the inning ends. The Twins again get a time runner in the scoring position. Sale gets the job done.
attempt the twins disclaimer. Everybody strap yourself in. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be dis disseminated without the express written consent of Minnesota Twins LLC. Here's Canerco taking ball one. Now you've read that a few times. Yeah, I want you in 15 words or less <laughs> to tell me what it means. Don't do it. Well, Just do it. Record it. Replay it. Show it at your bar without permission. Is that correct? That, I think you named it. Thank I think you. That's exactly what. It is. So, if you have permission, you can do it. If you don't have permission, don't don't even think permission, about it. You got to write a check. You know, you got to do that. Right. MLB. 2 and 0 to Canerco and it's sky to right field. Mm -hmm. And Kubel near the line makes the catch one away. So Canerco retired. He has the most damaging hit for the White Sox, a two out RBI single. But he's gone here for the first out of the eighth. It's 103 for Carl. They got Perkins down in the pen. I think. Uh, Say lefty, lefty, but yeah. Cavano's handled done so well here. He struck him out three times. The next guy, the next guy's been the problem guy. Right. And there's a strike on the outside corner. You know this fella's having a hard time this year, and, and you know, he's been a terrific hitter uh, for some other teams, but in the National League, and and he's really had a hard time here, but. You know, you like to try to feel a little bit sorry for him, but you know, he's got the wrong color uniform, on, <laughs> so we can't do it. He's retired on a harmless fly ball uh, to them. We don't like to talk about those kind of things, but uh, don't want to say too much bad about him because because we got to play him again tomorrow. Get him out tomorrow. Have you seen what he's done against left-handed pitching? Oh, it's awful, was it? Uh, 035 or yeah, something? Three hits, 78 at bats, 038. 38. Here's Rios. Benched a couple of dames and jumped back into the lineup with a couple of sharp hits, and then yeah. Pavano struck him out in the sixth. Cool. Tigers leading the Royals 3 1 in the seventh. Verlander going for Detroit. Mm -hmm. Dumped into short right, and Rios has his third hit. Mm -hmm. A two out single here in the eighth. Carl got that ball inside on him pretty good, and he just fought it off and pushed See. it off. So. And it eventually got Pavano out of the ball game with Ron Gardenhire coming ah. to the mound here. So Pavano can't pick up the win. That's too bad. I Carl haven't, I haven't well seen enough. the sign yet. Did they uh, give the sign yet? No, nope, he's going to leave him in. Nice. And Pavano wants to complete this inning and then he wants his team to score yeah, two or more correct. runs. And, and Gardy, Gardy's given him that opportunity, which is great. He just went out to check with him, let him know what's going on here, and we'll get this guy out and get off the field and, and uh, uh, see if we can get a run or two for him. And Pierzynski knows uh, all about this. He's uh, aware of what's just happened. Pavano's talked his way uh, through the eighth inning. So Pierzynski wants to get the hit that Pavano doesn't want to give him. Oh. And there goes Rios. Great jump. Butera really had no chance. So on the first pitch, Rio swipes second. It's a couple options now. Guardy has an opportunity if he so desires. He can he can walk AJ if he feels uh, a little uneasy about him. Pick the back pitch to Beckham. Beckham has made the last out in three times in this game so far. Last out of the inning three times. Second, fourth, and sixth inning. Blocked by Butera, and you don't keep score. You have your mm, manager's yeah. lineup card like you used to have, and Correct. make your marks on it, and you Correct. can tell what happened uh, Correct. through that. I, I feel more comfortable in the scorebook, but right. I know the scorebook people really enjoy their scorebooks and keeping score. And oh, we want to hold it up. Okay, we can hold it up. See, it's it's, it's some nights it gets very decorative, <laughs> <laughs> or it did get decorative. One and one to Pierzynski, and a bouncer up the line foul. I'm supposed to hold this up. Yep. Is that good? There you go. There you go. And this is like rem it's like the one Guardy has in the dugout or in the bullpen that Stelly's got. And you keep track of uh, there we go. And you keep track of who made the last outs or maybe a little note here or there. Uh, keep track of your pinch hitters and who's left on your bench and lefty righties and, and uh, it just helps you to be prepared for you know maybe not this inning or maybe two innings ahead of just what you know. Monsieur Guardi's at least two innings ahead. He's trying to be anyway. 
uh, in, in his preparation. One and two to Pierzynski. Oh, and that oh. one did get him. And Pierzynski, as he got hit, immediately looked at Todd Titchener, just a glance, saying, How about that one? And we're back in the second yeah. inning. Pierzynski thought he was hit by a pitch mm -hmm. and started towards first. Got hit with the one. Carl really missed firing on that one. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be a little bit of a concern for Guardy and Rick Anderson. You know, when the pitcher misses that bad, it, it sends up a little bit of a red flag. All right, Beckham's due to make another out here. Well, driven to left. Young <laughs> with the catch. Funny how the game goes. Pavano completes the eighth inning, and Beckham's made the last out in four of them. Pavano's pitched a great ball game tonight, and we're going to discuss that and a lot more. Tim Laudner, myself on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink, featuring the Toyota Post Game Rep, Kings of the Hill. That's Carl Pavano, and also a very nice job by Zach Stewart in his first start in a White Sox uniform. Our instructional throwing runners out at third. Tim Laudner's going to break down. If you're a catcher, do you throw behind the batter or in front of the batter when you're trying to throw a base stealer out at third base? Plus, Guardy's post game press conference coming your way live from his office here. Dick Bramer and TK. Thank you, Robbie. Michael Kadire leading off the eighth against Chris Sale. Sale got the White Sox out of the jam in the seventh. And now Kadire drives it to right center field. Diaz is chasing it. Won't get there. Off the wall. Kadire with an opening double in the eighth. His second double of the ball game. They've both gone to the opposite field. Excellent hitting. Excellent hitting by Michael. He didn't try to pull the ball, drove it to right center. Just a wonderful swing right there. Beautiful. Veteran player. Actually, it's a, not a real bad pitch. It's a pretty good pitch. And Michael did a wonderful job. That's a veteran player. This is what we talked about. Ozzy was in a position uh, with the one right hand hitter, and now we got the two lefties coming up next. So last night, Kubel hooked a double against Sale into the right field corner. Breaking ball missing inside. Sale yeah, left that ball inside to a little bit on the inside part of the plate to to Coobs last night and, and he he hit it hard. And that one kept the corner. And you say, well, you're backing away from the pitch, but when the guy throws 97, yeah. 98, you have to respect that, don't you? This is one thing. He's Kirby Kirby used to holler um, uh, you got to grab some courage <laughs> before he stepped in there. It's one and one. Not an easy thing to do. Oh, that kicks away from Pierzynski and into the Twins dugout. Yeah. 
Skadire will be held at third, and it's interesting if that ball had yeah. stayed in the park, he might have been able to score. He would have scored very easily. Uh, the Kurt Lillibridge, he's not really a first baseman. He didn't have any clue what was going on, and he really didn't hardly even make a move to get it. And uh, this one just caught AJ's shin guard and really took a right turn. You can see the catcher had no idea where it was by the time it left the field of play. Yeah, Michael scores easily. So now two and one, and the White Sox bring the infield in. About halfway, Richard. Then play about halfway, thinking that uh, Michael won't go unless it's uh, hit through the infield. He takes it, and it's wow. three and one. We've seen from Valencia, Young, and now Google some pretty strong wrists. How in the world do you wow. commit to a swing and, and check it like that? I don't know if he did it now. <laughs> we got away with it. Tommy on deck. And there's mm -hmm. a breaking ball over to fill the count. Well, he's going to stay with the breaking ball, Richard. There's no doubt about it. He's going Even on three, two? It. Well, he just threw it three and one. Yeah, okay. I assume that's what he's going to throw here. Fastball bounce to the right side. Kadir can't mm. score. One away. So that's why you bring the infield in halfway, right? Correct. Yeah, you, you, we're gonna, you know, Guardy's gonna make the ball go through, or maybe a high hopper or a high chopper, something bounce off the plate where you can go. But uh, now, what a moment what we're gonna do here. They may walk to me, you think, or no? I don't think so. I, I think he's going to let this young man sail. He pitched to him. Uh, Sales. Uh, he's the real deal. Infield all the way in for Tony. A breaking ball hits the corner. Strike one. Tony with a double under the glove of Dunn. And down the right field line in the sixth. A little bit of a hanger there, and Jimmy let it go. And, uh, let's hope he hangs another one. Oh. Inside one and one. It's a, it's a breaking pitch. He seemed more than willing to throw to lefties, but not so much to righties. Well, Kadir only saw the one pitch, so, right? Uh, and he got a fastball and he ripped it to right central. And last night, uh, Valencia got uh, he faced Danny. He got what? One fastball, I think. And two breaking balls. Over for a strike, and it's one and two. Well, AJ's having some trouble catching the ball. Even I don't know. Well, must be moving. Jimmy's got to get it in play here and do the best he can against this real tough lefty. Bounce to first and Kadire has right. to freeze again. Two down. And that'll leave it up to Valencia who will face Jason Frazier. Mm -hmm. So Danny Valencia will come up with the tying run at third. And Frazier will come in to try to get the right handed hitter out after Sale does a nice job getting Kubel and Tony.
with Operation Home Base presented by Miller Highlight. He's a veteran a piece of the highlight. Join us every Sunday, Twins Telecast for a special uh, Operation Home Base broadcast. Tomorrow we'll be live from the 148th Fighter Wing in Duluth starting at 1230. You can show your support for the military by logging on to FoxSportsNorth.com, clicking the Joining Forces logo to send your message of thanks. Well, the Twins have the time run at third, but they've had the time run at third through Kubel and Tony's at bat. And now Danny Valencia will face Chicago native and new to the White Sox right-hander Jason Frazier. Now the Toronto... They're going at us with the Blue Jays here, right? right? Except for Seth, of course. And so Frazier, who came over in the team Edwin Jackson trade along with the starter, Zach Stewart. I always liked this guy some when he was with the Blue Jays. I thought he had some nice pitches that he could throw. And he seemed to be very competitive. I was sort of surprised to see him get uh, traded, but uh, here he is. So the White Sox who got their two runs and the biggest hit was a two out hit by Conerto mm -hmm. desperately in search of a two out hit here in the eighth to get the game tied up and Danny got a nice hit for us right up the middle. And I'd like to point out where our second their yes. second baseman's playing here. They've uh, maneuvered their defense to play uh, uh, Beckham almost straight up the middle very close to being up the middle. Can't get much more up the middle than that. One strike. To Valencia. His hit went up the middle his last right. time up. And that hits the inside corner. Our only diamond cutter of the evening. And they're trying to take that away from him. They're trying to. Players aside, the White Sox lost a lot of salary when they made their trade, getting rid of Jackson and Tian. And they still got plenty out there, too. Yes, they do. Oh boy. Two strikes to Valencia. Oh, came back inside to get strike three right where he got strike two. And the twin strand hit at third after his leadoff double. Two to one ball game. Twins finally get a really good start from their starter, Carl Pavano, but they find themselves down a run as we go to the ninth. It's been a while since we had a real good start. Carl delivered, there's no question. That, unfortunately, we just had a little trouble getting a few runs on the board here tonight, but we still got another inning to play. Carl did a wonderful job, Dick. 112 pitches, 76 strikes. Uh, pretty good effort. Pretty good. Down and away from Glenn Perkins to Alejandro Diaz. And at the knees, one and one. I 
can't believe uh, Vic since we've talked uh, uh, Perkins uh, the velocity that he's gained since coming out of the bullpen knowing he's only got to pitch an inning or an inning in the third or so. Yeah, he also slaps one to the left his first hit after he's rounding out three times. Put my foot in my mouth again, didn't I? Jeez. Well, but you know, against He's Perkins, ball, that's, a, you gonna do? that's yeah. a pretty good uh, approach by the hitter, mm -hmm. just being it uh, on the ground sharply. I like that guy too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Morrell, the uh, number nine batter, might be asked to bunt. Well, I'd let him swing. No, no bunt. I thought with uh, uh, the left-hand hitting Pierre up next that uh, he would let. Uh, Moral swing, uh, being right hand hitter against Glenn, the lefty, and I never was much for bunting and the guy over with the lefty up next. So it depends how much confidence you got uh, against the lefty and Pierre and, uh, and what Ozzy feels about uh, Pierre hitting against the lefty. He just watched Diaz get a base hit, so maybe think, thinks that uh, Pierre can do the same thing, so he's going to have uh, Mr. Moral bunt and advance the runner. He's batting ninth for a reason. So, uh, like Ozzy pointed out earlier, if he can hit in this league, he's got a chance to be a pretty good player. Runner goes. Go. And Colbert can't field the one hop throw. It skips into center field. And Piazza I going in with a head first yeah. slide, and he stayed down for a while. Yeah, he got tangled up down there in second with Colbert. But. I was wondering if that was hit and run or something because uh, it, it looked to be uh, this fellow might have got hurt. Richard, second, you made a good observation there. You know, people get hurt this and that. Oh boy, you know, I'm not going to say. It. Every time I see somebody bang into the knee down there, I just think of Morno and what happened to him. Yeah. So I, I start to get nervous. I don't see any player get hurt, no matter what team. Herb Schneider, a longtime trainer for the White Sox. It's amazing to me, he's in the Hall of Fame. So a lot of things about Ricky Henderson, and maybe all those head first slides. And he never had a disabling shoulder injury or a wrist injury or an elbow injury. Gifted player. A lot of good things happened for him. Are you a proponent with a head first slide? No. No, I don't like it at all. I think it's dangerous for the fingers. Like you just pointed out, shoulders, uh, the whole routine, the ball hits you in the face and uh, jamming your fingers in the ground. There's the bunt and it'll go foul. What's well, interesting, we've got such a Dramatic contrast on the Twins roster. You got Denard Span, always goes in feet first. Then you got Ben Revere, always goes in head first. <laughs> and, I, and just the way they were brought up and as kids and how they played. And that's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. But uh, I, I, I get scared when I see those head first fly, uh, slides. Now there's time and place that you got to use it. I won't bother asking how you feel about the head first slide into first base. Oh gosh. No, <laughs> we only got two more innings or an inning, another inning here. We, there's not enough time. Check swing and a nice block by Butera. Two and Ooh. two. So the White Sox trying to manufacture a run here. They got a, an opening base hit by Diaz, a stolen base, and now the number nine hitter with a two two count. I love that slide Mr. Herbeck put on us in spring training in St. Petersburg after we traded uh, Sorrento to Seattle earlier that day. Earlier in the day, and uh, Herbie gives us this uh, flying Walenda in the third and St. Pete and blows out his shoulder. And uh, well, that was just a wonderful <laughs> afternoon. You'd be hard pressed if you saw it, and I, yeah. we were televising oh, that day. Oh, It'd be hard is pressed. That right? Yeah, we'd be oh, hard my. pressed to call that a head first slide. That though. was ugly. <laughs> I have another word for it. Santos warming up. Pierre at the plate. Morell striking out against Perkins. And a fastball down and away ball one. Morell had a chance to advance the runner, didn't get the job done. Perk come back and got a big strikeout for us. That was really big because that could have opened the door to. A lot of things could have happened. You could add your squeeze bunts. Uh, anything could have happened if he advanced the runner there. 
inside. And another thing Ozzy might have been thinking too, you know, if you can get the runner to third and uh, get Pierre can do a lot of things with the bat. And he's a depth bunter. Could have used the squeeze play. He had a lot of choices there. I was uh, probably end up being. Uh, we're fortunate that Morel didn't advance. Him. And now high three and zero oh with Ramirez on deck. Right down the middle three and one. We need a few more of those. Come on, Kirk. We need to need this guy out. We don't want to have. Uh, Two dangerous base runners on base. That always made me nervous as well. I could really run. One was bad enough to him too. <laughs> Not good at all. And a walk put fills first base. So Perkins giving up an opening base hit. Now a walk will have a pitching change. With Alexi Ramirez due up next. And Perkins facing three men and two of them end up reaching. Joe Nathan coming in here in the ninth inning. And once you get to the top of the ninth, well, you're not going to have a safe situation, so it makes all the sense in the world to bring him in here. Yeah, Guardy needs him now, and now's the spot for Joe. He's got the two big right hand hitters coming up Ramirez and Canerco, and now's the time. Got to have him right now. Nathan has been a completely different pitcher. You look at his season numbers, but there's really been two seasons. First half right before he went on the disabled list, and what he's done since coming off of the. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I thought about this quite a bit, Richard. Uh, not one, well, well, some. But the uh, a man that goes through a surgery, uh, Tommy John, goes through the rehab, the work, the work, the work, and just being maybe a little unsure of just how it does it. Is it going to hurt again? Is it going? Am I going to do this? Am I going to? It's got to be a real tough thing mentally, physically, and, and you said it perfectly. Uh, basically, two different seasons for Joe, and, and uh, it's just wonderful to watch him pitch now. His back half since his trip to the DL and, and to Rochester for rehab, he's, he's been a, a different guy. First and second, one away. Ramirez at the plate. The spin move. Just to keep the runner's attention. Michael breaking towards second base. Joe spinning. Just letting the runner know, hey, we're, we haven't forgot about you. In this situation in the fifth inning, the front runner, Pierre, took off. Yes, and then there was a throw to third that Valencia didn't handle, yeah. and the White Sox got their second run. And needless to say, we're not going to try to let that happen. Breaking ball over first drop. That's a nice pitch, nice breaking ball to start off. Ramirez probably sitting dead red, looking for the fastball. 
Gets the breaking ball. Joe gets ahead in the count. Still looking for a grounder. Six four three works. One strike to Ramirez. Got a fastball up and he nice. tried to spin on well, it. He, he sure did. He took a good swing. There's no question, but it was 94 with a lot of giddy up to it. Up in the zone. And uh, Ramirez just couldn't get the bat to it. But I think what you mentioned earlier, Richard, is absolutely correct. Back in April, May, that, that ball didn't have that 90. It wasn't no 94. It was, you know, 90, 91, maybe. And now he's got it back. You're right. And what we've seen since he's come back is a strike three pitch, right. which he didn't which have. Very in important. The... Correct. You're absolutely right. Two strikes. We'll see if he can get strike three here. Ooh. Hello. 94 and make you move your feet. Nice pitch. Had to move his elbows or he was going to get everything, shattered. Everything moving. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. That might have shattered his well. One and two. And he flips a breaking pitch away into the seats. Not such a good swing on that pitch. Balls away from him, and it's all part of that that 94 up and around your elbows there, and making you move. Get a little bit uncomfortable. One and two. Again at ninety four, again fouled straight back. Ramirez is having a few good swings. So give him credit. He's hanging in there. He's putting up a good at bat. Joe needs to make a good solid pitch here. What baseball's all about here the competition of the game. Ramirez is, is he's been around the block now. He knows what's going on. Joe Nathan certainly knows what's going on. All about making pitches and putting up a good at bat. Here he go. Runners will advance. Throw to second. Into nice stop by Tolbert. They're going to send the runner anyway, and the White Sox will score. Tolbert knocked it down. Didn't feel it cleanly. And on the check swing of all things, the White Sox get another run. Well, first things first. The check swing and the umpire at first. Jerry Davis. He hasn't called his. The check swing tonight has he Richard I don't believe he has everything's been no swing right I don't think he did we're going to find out no he didn't go so that's a good call and then Drew try to make a play here and throw to second unfortunately threw a little bit on the inside part and uh, Michael had to dive back for it go back to the balls on the inside part and and uh, Tolbert was able to retrieve it, but it, the damage was done. Two and two now to Ramirez. With Pierre at second, tiptoeing toward third. And Nathan. Oh. And he's going, and he'll would have stolen wow. third easily. You're absolutely right, Richard. We got to do a little better job. Um, scoring was a wild pitch on the last one. Wild pitch. Runner scores on throwing error, E2. And that's official. Wow. Pierre is a nice base runner, Richard. You got to give credit where credit's due. He's doing a nice job running the bases, and that's his forte. Part of his uh, his uh, repertoire is running the bases, and he does it very well. Two and two. And a long at that here by Ramirez, but of course Pierre doesn't have any place to go unless Diazza gets a read on that pitch in the right. dirt and scampers to third. Yeah, he did, and, and uh, everything. Everything certainly fell in the way of that's what I was telling you before about having one guy on the bases that can run and having yeah. two out there makes things doubly tough. And that's exactly what happened. It's bad enough with one guy. Two guys, things happen. And 
and it's and the difference making runs for Chicago yeah, something they scored yeah. on their base run correct yeah, something they haven't done you know they've been you know, for years uh, three run homers and, right. and things like that now they're scoring a few more runs uh, running the bases uh, Ozzy certainly pointed out uh, for a few years uh, uh, I don't like bring this up piranhas and all that stuff where that's how we scored some uh, right. number of runs. Yeah. And uh, looks like they're taking a little bit. And this Diaz fella, who I told you I liked right from the get go, I don't know if he's going to be any good in the future, but he's uh, certainly making an impact for himself. Two and two again. And now three and two. Diaz has started this mess with his base hit against there. Perkins yeah. to left field. He sure did. He's good at that. Punched it through the left side. And then the walk was with Pierre. Yep. And now it's three and two to Ramirez. This has been a, fighting through an 11 pitch at bat so far. Very big league got that right here. This is what you're looking for from your veteran players to give you this kind of effort. Third and it's ball four. So Pierre swipes third and Ramirez goes to first after a 12 pitch walk. We've got a tough pitch to throw with the breaking ball down and away. And, and uh, Pierre just got that extra step with the breaking pitch and was able to steal another bag. He couldn't even throw it. So the Twins, who Still walked up. seven men last night. And Pavano walked just one in his outing, but now here in the ninth inning, a couple of walks from guys who normally throw yeah. a lot of strikes. And that's it's going to bite us here, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Two good base runners now on the bags, but I think Ozzy's got to let Kernerko swing. We need that ground ball. Kernerko's swung and missed in a lot yeah. of those breaking pitches, but the mm -hmm. game ultimately was the one he hit. That's true, Richard. And and this fellow is such a good hitter, and, and we can see his leg got to be barking because he's trying to reach those pitches, and he, his body just won't let him do it. And, but he's still in there playing and contributing. And like you pointed out, he's gotten a big hit. One and one. It is his left leg, his front leg. He got hit by a pitch, had to miss some time, and uh, that coincided with the start of a six-game losing streak for the White Sox. One of my favorite uh, old-time twins, uh, Jim Lemon. Wonderful hitting coach we had here for many years. Uh, he used to profess you can't play the game or you can't hit if you don't have your legs underneath you. And you, and you see a guy like this who's trying to fight through an, in, an injury. He can't run. He can't play a position because of the, the leg injury, but he's still out there uh, giving it uh, whatever he's got to help the team. And, and these are the kind of players you really admire as a a former manager or, or somebody who likes the game of baseball, you got to love these kind of guys. Like Tony, same thing. Right. He's going to get out there and play no matter what. The Dyers, they're going to play. Just write their name down. And that's not the luxury, of, or hasn't been a luxury for Ron Gardenhire, no. with the exception of a couple of players pretty Correct. much all year long. That's true. I haven't seen anything like it that's happened here. Two and one to Conurco. Breaking ball, he doesn't bite. It's three and one. It's a pretty good take right there. That's the one that I think you mentioned earlier about the one he's been swinging at and chasing tonight. He, he hasn't had good good swings at it, but uh, he laid off that one, and that one bothered me some that he, he was able to lay off it. Lillibridge on deck. Remember, Dunn was taken out of the ball game, and now three and one to Conerco with only one out in the inning. Down the middle of fastball. Okay, now this would be an interesting pitch here. I, I, whether uh, Ramirez is going to run and Ozzy's going to have some confidence that uh, Kernerko is going to get the bat on the ball and able to stay out of the double play. And if that's the case, then uh, they're going to score another run. So going three and two here was uh, was not really in the Twins' best interest. All right now, what's Gutierrez signal? Well, Drew's given a sign whether he's going to throw it through. 
or he's going to try to hold on to the ball because Pierre has too much speed. So if he excuse me if he throws it down there if something a little funny happens Pierre's going to scamper home and we don't we don't need that. We can't have it. Ramirez goes and the pitch grounded to short and just pretty much what you predicted might happen yeah. happened. Yeah. They send the runner it went yeah. to three and two they sent the runner and as a result the White Sox get another run. Yeah. Yeah, we we're afraid of that three two pitch is very dangerous and getting the count to three and two really puts a lot of heat on everybody. And we're back to the comment about having the people on base that can run and uh, cause you some a lot of headaches and make a lot of things happen. And these are the little things that these players can do or any good runners can do to create havoc with your defense or your pitching and, and how you have to go about playing defense. So when I mean, you saw right there is. We pointed out that you know getting the three and two made it made it for a bad situation. Really, all the White Sox have done is they got a leadoff single. They advanced runners. They ran a little bit aggressively, you forced know, the issue. You, well, you're absolutely correct, Richard. And and you watch them play here tonight and last night. They certainly do not look like a team that's under five. You know, and, and, and so it it's there. It's just not there all the time. And. and why try to explain why and why not it's not there I don't, I don't, I'm not sure but uh, again uh, you know they certainly have talent and ability to get the job done we've seen it and uh, to anybody that, you know if you don't know nothing you, you'd wonder why they're under 500. Well it's been a perplexing question in Chicago all year long. Correct. And of course uh, you know they've had a few issues with uh, Rios and, and Don and they haven't done much but I, I still go back to pitching and, and, and like you pointed out they, they catch the ball fine. Their defense is fine and, and uh, their bullpen's fine. Maybe it wasn't so good in the beginning. They lost a number of games. Uh, Thornton trying to close. He didn't do a very good job at it. Uh -oh. Lillibridge lifts one high and deep to left. Young at the fence. Oh. And it's a home run for Brent Lillibridge. A two run home run. And a four run ninth has opened up the ball game. It's just unbelievable the game of baseball what can happen. Here's a guy that probably should be on the bench and he ends up hitting a home run against us. He gets in the game. Ozzie can't wait to get the other guy out of the game. Get this guy in and ends up hitting a home run. Brent Lillibridge won't be hitting in the cleanup spot too many times in his career but he hits a home run. Just over the uh, fence. Just got up. So Perkins charged with a couple of runs. Now Nathan charged with a couple of runs. Funny game. And the White Sox finally hit a home run, and it comes from Brent Lillibridge. Here's Rios. And back to Nathan. That'll end the inning. But not until the White Sox take a one-run ball game and turn it into a five-run game.
giving up a couple of runs, each issuing a costly walk. And our Jimmy John's delivery of the game going to the surprise starter for the White Sox, Zach Stewart. He jumped in there on us and uh, one day's notice, I guess, and knocked back the veteran PV. And this kid jumps in and, and give credit where it's due. He did a good job. There's no question about it. He's got a good moving fastball. He's got a nice breaking ball. He change up. He, he might be a, a good. Might end up being a good trade for the White Sox before all said and done. We'll see what happens. Not a safe situation, but the Chicago closer Sergio Santos comes uh, into the ball game now. In your time in spring training, did you ever deal with this guy as a, as a middle infielder? Because he was briefly probably no. uh, with the, the Not, twin as a position player. No, he wasn't in spring training. He we picked him up uh, maybe in May or June. Oh, okay. All and right. He came over with us and. And Jimmy Jimmy Rand signed him up and got him over there. He was a shortstop, played a little third, um, but he certainly turned into a pitcher. My goodness gracious, who would have thunk it? They give the White Sox a little credit here, giving this fellow an opportunity to to pitch and let alone pitch at the end. It's unbelievable. First pitch strike to Delman Young. What we've seen from Santos is a developing and a more frequent breaking pitch. Oh, and there it is up and in. He didn't finish that one off. He just spun it. Dropped his arm down. His elbow went down. Elbow down. Ball stays up. Not a good combination. <laughs> there you go. What well, we better. saw last year when he pitched, I mean, it was 95, oh. 95, 96, oh. 94, and he didn't have a breaking pitch, right. but now. On television, we haven't seen him much in person because the Twins mm -hmm. have kept yes. him in the bullpen. Correct. Just a, a lot of breaking pitches. Wow. A fastball off the plate at 95. Walk would be good to start with. We'll take one, and we'll go from there. You'd like? Because we need runners. We need base runners. So if he wants to uh, give us one, we'll, we'll certainly take. It. Three and two. There's that 95 you're talking about, Dick, on the radar gun. He certainly has a live arm. There's no question about that. And, and as you pointed out, the, the slider seems to be getting better. After the first lousy one he threw, he's thrown a couple pretty good. They were down and away where you want them to be. You don't want that spinner up and in. Full count to young. That would be a fastball. Oh, and a half swing. It's a. Strike three one away. Tough pitch of balls up and in at 96 on the gun and it's it's riding up and in on Delman. He's doing the best he can to foul it off. Just didn't work out. Tough, tough pitch to him. You gotta hope to foul that kind of pitch off and uh, get you another one to look at. But, uh, unfortunately we we didn't get to didn't get the bat to it. Tolbert takes outside, ball one. Tolbert with a pair of singles. Right, he's got to find a way to get on the base. Ben Revere's in the on deck circle. He'll hit for Butera. Taking a strike. Going to the ninth inning in Kansas City with the Tigers leading four to three. Has Verlander given up, not to distract from our game, but he's given up a few runs lately, Richard, that I've noticed. Yes. He's human. It's hit to the gap in the left center. Rios is over to make the catch yeah. out of number two. Rios is having a good night for himself. He, he, he hasn't had many of those, so give credit where it's due. He's playing right in the right spot. The White Sox defense is perfect. Playing Matty over in left center with a hard throwing Santos, so they're going to play opposite. And uh, Santos standing right in the right spot. Here's Revere off the bench hitting for Butera, who had gone 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch. And. Uh, Laid down a sacrifice bunt. Twins had some chances in the seventh and the eighth inning after leadoff hits to get the game tied at two. The White Sox not only scored the next run, the next four. We got to give a lot of credit to their relief pitcher Sale who came in and got the after the Kadire, especially well, the inning before when he came in and got the job done, and then he then he had a, a Mauer span and Mauer and got them out, and then Kadire hit the double and got Kubel and. And Tomey, so 
Got to give him Sale a lot of credit here too. He he really bridged the gap to uh, the closer. Frazier got an out. Uh, Valencia, and that, that's called putting the game together by the manager and the pitching coach. They, they uh, get a good solid start, and then bridge to the closer. And the White Sox, who've only beaten the Twins once prior to this series, win the first two games here at Target Field. And so the White Sox playing some good baseball here in Minnesota, Robbie, and they've taken the first two of this three game series. And Dick, it's been a long time since the White Sox have won two straight games against the Minnesota Twins, but they do it tonight. Six won the final score. We've got a lot of stuff coming your way on Twins Live presented by Century 